Keep in touch with the Scottish League Cup second round. Hearts, Partick, Hibs, Wraith Rovers are underway at two. Kilmarnock Celtic gets underway at Rugby Park at three o'clock. The referee is Anthony Taylor. There's a the clouds are high. There are a, a couple of grey clouds above Villa Park. There are also patches of blue sky. But I've got to say it's a it's a pleasant afternoon, temperature-wise at least, even though the sun for the time being isn't shining as Villa get us underway for one of the great stadiums of English football. Yeah, it's always good playing here. The atmosphere is always good. I loved it because it was always one of my rival teams, but yeah, great atmosphere. Yeah, as a, a former Birmingham City striker, uh, as Watkins comes forward already and sends over a cross and looking to meet it on the far side, riding was Dinia and Villa get an early corner in the opening 23 seconds. Your record against Villa actually wasn't too bad as a Blue Nose. I know I didn't lose ever against Aston Villa. <laughs> in, is that right or wrong? Played six in the second City derby, 1-3, three, true three. He scored two, including a winner here for Steve Bruce's side in a 2-1 win. Yeah, and then I scored the first one in the first ever meeting, yep, after, what, 15, 16 years. I remember that, yep, I do. Well, the Blues of Everton will hope to try and come away undefeated like your record, Clinton, but they've got some work to do because in the opening 60 seconds, Aston Villa have got a corner kick in front of the whole 10, playing from left to right. It's played out towards McGinn. McGinn looks for a shooting opportunity and he gets it off his left foot, took a deflection, goes behind for another corner. Yeah, you can see it's well worked to be fair. You can see the set-piece coach standing next to Unai Emery, so they, it's something they work on and John McGinn does well, but it's good defending in the end. So in there, Claret and sky blue shirts and white shorts, Aston Villa in that two-tiered halt end against Everton in the all-royal blue, corner's taken short and it's Dinia who curls it in, headed out by Keane, drops to the edge of the area tries to shoot for Diaby, plays it out to the left, played back in and then cleared away by Edrissa Gay for, uh, for Everton and maybe Everton can come forward now as Garner spreads the diagonal ball out towards Iwobi he controls it, coming forward he will be now with the cross, concert clears. The Everton players, by the way, are wearing black armbands in memory of, of Michael Jones, the Everton fan who sadly died working on the side of their new stadium last week. He was only 26 years of age. And just as at Anfield yesterday, the Everton supporters in the 26th minute, I'm expecting them to uh, give him a memory with a, a applause it was a rather touching moment at, at Anfield yesterday the Liverpool supporters were singing you'll never walk alone it was a terrific gesture that you'd expect from the uh, the two clubs um, despite being rivals they still have that bond on uh, on Merseyside and indeed there was a, there was a banner in memory of Michael Jones being held aloft by the Everton supporters ahead of kickoff so we'll expect that a little bit later on but that's what the Everton fans uh, players are wearing black armbands for as it will be is dispossessed by Cash and now it's with Camera coming forward for Aston Villa. Nil-nil in the early stages. He's got Bailey on this near side the right. And Bailey just slows it down back towards Douglas Louise. Calvert Lewin back for, for Everton is a, a real bonus, Clinton. Yeah, definitely. The first game of the season, I know no Mopai got a bit of stick. He never liked to see players get stick, but he missed a lot of chances to be fair. And so did um Decore. And you're just thinking when he can keep Calvert Lewin fit. Everyone will be um, fine this season, but they just need to keep him fit. That's the biggest problem for them, for Calvin Lewin and Everton is keeping him fit. I'm told that he went to Germany in the summer in a bid to try and address his injury problems. The thing is, the last two seasons, not just last season, he's made only 18 appearances in each of the last two seasons. Mm, yeah, it's not good enough to be fair, but his standard. But you just wish him well. You can hope, hopefully he has an injury-free season because he'll be a big part, have a big part to play for Everton. Sorry. And also, he'd look to try and get back into the England fold under Gareth Southgate. Himself, of course, a former Aston Villa player, as uh, Ashley Young, a former England international, guides the ball back to uh, to Jordan Pickford. His 250th Premier League appearance today. 31 of those were uh, for Sunderland. As uh, all in green away towards our right, clears the ball away downfield, gets plenty of distance on that, comes off the head of the Polish international Matty Cash, and it will be a, an Everton throw. He's got to do more, Wobie. He's one-on-one -on -one a lot of times and he has good opportunities and he's got to be more positive because he was good for them last season, but even more positive because they're playing Garner on the right-hand side. He's not a natural winger, so everything has to come down this side. Yeah, James Garner 
who uh, of course was part of the uh, the England success in the uh, in the Euros. Indeed, he played all six games for Lee Carsley's side. For the former Birmingham City connection there with uh, with Lee Carsley, but uh, Garner was instrumental for uh, for England in that Euro success. No success though for the Lionesses. Not that I'm sure that you've missed it if you've just tuned in to, to BBC Radio 5 Live, but Spain winning by a goal to nil. And on the 5 Live Football Daily, we heard from Mary Oates with Gary Flintoff live on 5 Live. Voted the, uh, the, the best goalkeeper in the tournament despite her disappointment, that raw emotion. It was a considered interview. If you missed it, I'm sure there will be a special podcast from the team down under on the 5 Live Football Daily feed as a special podcast with all the reflections after that disappointing scoreline. But uh, congratulations to Spain after their success. Nil-nil here, five and a half minutes play, 5 Live Sport. That was uh, Onana with the press on uh, on camera. Back to Martinez, a World Cup winner, of course, himself with, with Argentina back in uh, last year in uh, Qatar. Everton worked the ball back. Tarkovsky's outside the centre circle, hits a right-footed ball on the edge of that centre circle. Garner tries to get away, and it comes off the back of the head of Delia. Former Everton fullback, and in front of the Everton support, two tiers of that stand on the far side. They get a throw level with a penalty area. Yeah, it's, a, it's been an all right start from Everton. They've kept the ball. It's a good diagonal from Tarkovsky. It's good defending from Luka Dinja. Here is uh, James Garner. His cross takes a bit of a deflection. Allows Pau Torres to clear the ball away. Full debut. The uh, signing from Villarreal. Of course, he came off the bench to replace Tyro Mings after that serious knee injury at Newcastle last weekend. Here is Ashley Young. Floats the ball forward. Calvert-Lewin tries to get goal side of of concert but it kicks on off the lush green surface and away in front of that north stand here at Villa Park and, and out for a goal kick to the uh, to the home side nil nil it remains they'll miss Mings I think Paul Torres is a good defender but trying to just get up to the speed of the Premier League I thought Mings and Concert's partnership last season was very good well it's Mings has played uh, 141 of the last 153 games in the Premier League of that he started 140 of those 141 so of the 13 that he hasn't started Villa have won one and they've lost 10 gives you an indication of how valuable he is to the Villa course yeah very much so yeah um, I think he's a, a good defender he had his spells where he, obviously when Steven Gerrard was here where you're thinking he's not going to play but credit to him he stood up tall and formed a good partnership with Konza the voice of Clinton Morrison on BBC Radio 5 Live, also available on BBC Sounds if you wish to take us with, her, with you wherever you go on this Sunday afternoon as uh, Bailey to camera, cash, triangular passing patterns on this near side in front of the main stand here at Villa Park and then concert back to, uh, to Martinez, all in black, the exception of his white gloves and his white boots and the Argentine passes the ball back out towards that left-hand side, uh, a measured start so far from uh, from Aston Villa Pau Torres no pressure on the ball for the central defender he's midway through his own half passes the ball to his right Conson now to this near side for Cash Iwobi though is in front of him and Cash has to go back and Everton in the minute have got every royal blue shirt back behind the ball as now it's with Leon Bailey who drops inside his own half to collect it he runs down the right touch line then gives it away and that was to uh, to Gay of, uh, of Everton passes the ball then back to Ashley Young, again he hits that ball early towards Calvert-Lewin, out of his area, read it well. Martinez volleys the ball forward, McGinn brings it under control, comes forward now the Scottish international, strong run by McGinn, edge of the area, lays it off to his left, Watkins, and then Diaby hits it first time off his left foot and skies it into the halt end, goal kick, 0-0. Yeah, it was good play from John McGinn, he played playing on that left-hand side where he probably you usually see where Buendia is. Well, he obviously picked up that horrific injury, so he was him well, but good ball to Watkins. He lays it back to Diaby, and Diaby tries the first-time shot that goes over. And Pickford's already time-wasting. Yeah. And Villa fans are not happy. <laughs> well, of course, Anthony Taylor, the uh, the referee, will be keeping a, a beady eye on, uh, on Jordan Pickford, who's uh, getting a reputation, isn't he, for uh, for that, as uh, Decorey plays it into the box, cut out by, uh, by Conser. Only as far as Decorey sends over a cross. It was a good ball as well. The keeper spilled it under a challenge for, for Calvert-Lewin and they've both gone down holding their head. And straight away, Anthony Taylor beckons Ooh. the physios on. I mean, it was a teasing ball in. 
Calvert Lewin had to go for it, yeah, but the two of them have collided. Yeah, you just hope both are all right, um, definitely. But it's a great ball from Decore, and Martinez comes and does ever so well. But you have to go in that for that as a centre forward, um, Calvert Lewin, and you just hope they're both all right because they've had some bad injuries, Calvert Lewin, and you just his first start in ages. You just hope he's all right, and Martinez as well. You mentioned, of course, uh, Buendia, who's picked up that long-term injury in training, joining Tyrone Mings, uh, Jacob Ramsey, uh, also out. Moreno, Dendonka, Bertrand Traore is coming back from an injury, he at least is on the bench today, but uh, Unai Emery hasn't necessarily been blessed with good fortune at the start of this first full season, when of course he did ever so well after taking charge, he was appointed last October. Uh, Martinez is back on his feet, but of course they're just, they'll be checking to make sure that there's no concussion there, yeah. whereas Calvert-Lewin at the minute is still lying on his back being tended to by the physios. He is, he is. Uh, uh, maybe, would he have a cut or are they just checking him to see if there's any concussion? I think, or oh, kind of feeling his jawbone, his cheekbone to see if there's no damage on it. But hopefully he's all right. There might be, I think there might be a bit of a blood there, a little bit of a cut. Yeah, well, they're going to take uh, due care and, uh, and attention. Martinez looks like he's all right. The, the physios are leaving Martinez now. But uh, Calvert-Lewin, we're only just talking about his misfortune with, you know, with injuries for, for Calvert-Lewin, knee, hamstring. You know, he really has been um, hampered in the last two seasons. A World Cup winner for England at under-20 level. Yeah. But it, now he's starting to sit up. Martinez just gives him a reassuring... I think it's a blow under his head. eye. You can see he's got a lump there already under his eye. So it'll just be swelling. So hopefully he's all right. It just depends it don't swell up too much. You can see it there. He's going to have a black eye in the morning, that's for sure. One thinks back to last Sunday when, of course, we were together at the, uh, the Brentford Community Stadium and Romero took that blow early on for, for Tottenham, didn't he? Got Tottenham's first goal and then eventually was forced to come off the field. I mean, that's the, the, the protocols now are, are strict. You know, I mean, even the fact that Christian Romero last week didn't want to come off, Tottenham were forced to bring him off. But it looks like Calvert-Lewin is going to continue, but you're right, he's going to have a going to have a bruise under that eye, I would imagine. Yeah, hopefully. They just have to keep an eye on him because he's obviously feeling something just below his eye. So hopefully he's all right. Of the two, Calvert-Lewin looks like he's come the worse worst. off of the pair. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they're both able back on their, on their feet. Play resumes. 12 minutes in, nil-nil. Martinez hesitates as he was closed down. He managed to thread a ball through to Douglas Luiz. He didn't flat. And they're able to beat the press from Everton. And Pau Torres now out towards Dinia, far side the left, along the ground, McGinn on the stretch, now passes the ball forward, Diaby looks for that shooting opportunity, passes the ball back towards Diaby, bypasses him inside the penalty area, groans from the Villa supporters, from Bailey's ball that was hit low. I don't know for the life of me why he's not shooting there, Is it maybe because it's not on his strong left foot, but it's good play from Diaby, he's just got a flash out across the box, instead he tries to pull back and Everton clear it. His record for Bayer Leverkusen, 173 appearances, 49 goals, but also, and just as crucially, 48 assists. Oof. That's, That's a very going. impressive. Yeah, you're right, that is some going. And of course, he's already up and running for his Villa account with the uh, the goal, which turned out to be just a consolation at St. James's Park, that impressive win for Newcastle last weekend. 13 minutes played, nil-nil, it remains. And after this, we've got another commentary at 4.30. West Ham United against Chelsea. John Murray and Paul Robinson, the, uh, the commentary team. Down at the, uh, the Olympic Stadium. It's at the minute we're watching the claret and blue of Aston Villa. John Murray and who? Who did you say? Paul, Paul Robinson. Oh, Robert. Okay, that's good. Yeah, Robert's made his trip Who you said, Glenn there. Murray? No, the, the, the Murray brothers have been separated. Separated. <laughs> Parts are leading Partick by uh, by a goal to nil in uh, at two o'clock kickoff at uh, Tyne Castle across the city of Edinburgh. It remains Hibbs Wraith Rovers goalless. That one there. Of course, Aston Villa will be playing at Easter Road on Thursday night in the uh, the playoff for Europa Conference League. As Douglas Louise is shown a yellow card here for a challenge on Ashley Young. Yeah, it's early. You don't want to give it, get yellow cards away that early in the game as well. It's good play from Ashley Young. He won the first tackle against um, Camera, and then he just carried on going fo um, forward. Like his wing days, to be fair, Ashley Young. Two yeah. little step-overs. And just no attempt to play the ball. Knocks him off his stride 
and uh, Douglas Louise shown a yellow card by the referee Anthony Taylor so the sun now shining here at Villa Park we're approaching the quarter of an hour mark in this Premier League contest and Everton have got a free kick must be a good 10-15 yards in from the touchline on this near side the left attacking the north stand Villa have got a line on the edge of their penalty area. Garner and Young are the two over it. It's Garner who's going to take it right-footed. Diagonal ball. Onana's downward header. Referee's blown his whistle. Flag yeah. didn't go up. I think he something. saw a block. There was a block. Someone blocked Onana's marker off. Someone blocked him and he ran round the back. Because I was thinking, why is he getting a free header? Well worked. Um, free kick, but it was a foul. Referee does well. Villa have won the last four games against Everton. But in their long history between the two, said before about it being the most played fixture in English football. Villa have never won five in a row. He considered that the first meeting was back in 1888. As Bailey, right-hand side to Diaby. Behind him is Camera. Camera rolls it back out towards Bailey, just in from the right touchline level of the penalty area. He's got to go head-to-head -head against Duobi. They've doubled up as Onana gets back. Cash then tries to take it on. Shrugs off Onana and then... Young comes in with a really, really forceful bit of play and rams the ball out of play for a, for a throw. Full of determination from, from Ashley Young. Credit to him, he keeps himself in great shape for his age and to, ma to manage to keep on going. And he won't, give, he won't want to retire at the end of this season, I know that for sure. It's a one-year deal that he's uh, signed on a free at, uh, at Everton. 247 appearances during his two spells combined at Aston Villa for the former England international. When I was doing my research, I, I thought, ooh, 38 years of age, still going strong. Is there a chance that if he was to score today, could he be Everton's oldest goal scorer? But in fact, that uh, record will remain, certainly today for at least, for Wally Fielding. 38 years and 305 days back in 1958. <laughs> So he turned, Good 30, research, he, turned, he turned 38 in July, did Ashley Young. So if he pops up with a late goal later in the season, then that record might be in jeopardy. But for today, <laughs> Wally Fielding's name will still stand in the, uh, the Everton history book. 16 and a half minutes played, still nil-nil. Pau Torres at a walking pace, left of the centre circle. Camera gets it forward to Douglas Luiz. Forward pass now. Diaby edge of the area, Leon Bailey inside right channel, the penalty box with the cut back and turned in by McGinn. Well worked by Aston Villa and in the 18th minute Aston Villa lead by a goal to nil. John McGinn from close range, superb approach play and Villa lead Everton by a goal to nil. Yeah, yeah, it's good play to be fair, they get overrun in midfield They're not, and they don't track Douglas Luiz plays a good ball to Diaby and there's space in there it's either one of the centre backs or the holding midfield has to get there and this time Leon Bailey does well he goes on the outside good little ball and a great run from John McGinn in that nut, kind of number 10 bro great finish into the roof of the net it's a surprising when you think back to his record last season he only scored the uh, the one goal he's tenacious he's creative you think for a player of his quality he should be contributing more goals and in the first home game here at Villa Park John McGinn celebrates in front of the whole ten. Super John McGinn gets a huge cheer by the PA announcer here at Villa Park. His name is being chanted and they lead by a goal to nil. And he took it well. Took it very well. And the patient approach paid off. Yeah, it did. And his manager's big thumbs up. So, yeah, really good finish. Unai Emery did ever so well when uh, he replaced Steven Gerrard 49 points under Unai Emery last year, only Manchester City, Arsenal Manchester United and Liverpool actually won more in that period and it was uh, a bit of a bump in the road to start the new campaign at St James's Park against a resurgent Newcastle but looking to bounce back Villa lead 1-0 far side for Everton Patterson back to Garner Strokes it now to Keane. Six yards forward of the centre circle. Long ball into the penalty area. Hesitation. It will reach Iwobi. Cash slow to get there. Iwobi now does the step over. Scoops the ball into the penalty area. Decorey down into the ground. Rides up the chest of uh, Calvert-Lewin. And Villa are able to get the ball away. 
the goal scorer again. Early ball forward towards Diaby. You can feel Villa Park come alive whenever Diaby gets the ball. He's yeah. that exciting a player. He, has, he is. He gets fans off their seats, and that's what they want to see. Here is Iwobi. Everton looking for a quick response into the penalty area. Loops in the air from Douglas Luiz's intervention and caught by Martinez, the goalkeeper for Aston Villa. Villa 1, Everton 0. And we're going to have another stoppage because it's Ashley Young who's down on his haunches at the moment. So Mikulenko gets uh, a chance to, uh, to warm up. They actually played Manchester United on, uh, on closed doors in, uh, in midweek, did Everton. Uh, Calvert-Lewin got a good run out because he's just been trying to get match fitness and he played the full 90. Danjuma, Branthwaite, Mikulenko, Godfrey, number of under-21 players also figured in that, uh, I think it was a 2-0 defeat that, uh, for, uh, for Everton. But vital at this stage is to try and get game time, minutes under your belt. Yeah, definitely, and you need, that's what you need. And I think Calvin Lewin is struggling to be. I mean, he is struggling. I can just see Decore signal over to the bench and say he is struggling because it's a big old whack he's took there, and the eye might be starting to close up. I can see him keep flinching his eye, so it could be a huge blow. They could end up um, him having to go off. It's funny you're talking about Calvert Lewin, Clinton. I was just keeping an eye on uh, Young as well because at the minute he's not running too freely after that challenge as McGinn picks it up. Challenge from Onana. McGinn gets away on that left hand side and then in the end Patterson has to go to ground and forces the ball behind for a, a corner kick. And Aston Villa have got yet a, another corner here at Villa. They're leading by a goal to nil. We've been playing for, uh, for 21 minutes. And if he's not fit, it's going to be a huge blow because as we say, we want to see Calvert Lewin on the pitch but uh, he's so unfortunate there to get a big blow on the on his um, eye like that and having to come off if he does have to come off. Well, I think Neil Mope has just said to Mikolenko, they want you. And so Mikolenko will be coming on, I think. Corner kick though to Villa, far side the left, leading by a goal to nil. BBC Radio 5 Live, also live on BBC Sounds. Anthony Taylor, after a slight delay, gives the corner kick with a whistle, taken short on that far side. It's Dinia who delivers it, left-footed, and it's headed away well under pressure by, uh, by Garner. Comes out to Cash, right corner of the area, left-footed ball back in, and the header, and Watkins cleared off the line by Patterson. Boy, he did, he did well, but the goal stands. And he give the goal? Well, the Villa fans thought that he'd given the goal. He's given a penalty. He's oh, given he's a, given pen a penalty. penalty. He must have given a penalty because um, Pickford's collided into him. Sean Dyche questioning the fourth official at the moment. The ball was played in. The downward header, Watkins got there. Yeah, there was an outstretched arm by Pickford. He's given a penalty. I That's thought with the given. cheers that despite the lunge from Patterson that the goal line technology... Not too sure. Is there a real connection there from Patterson? Uh, but, so, on pick by Pickford? He, yeah, he does catch him. I think he does catch him. But I thought because he got there, he was going to obviously let him let it play on. But he's pulled it back and he's, yeah, he's given a penalty. Big question is, is will Watkins take it? Because he's missed quite a few for them recently. And I see him miss some in the summer series. VAR checking as well. Yeah. Because would he be? Could he be offside from the nod down from Bailey? Well, is there a VAR check then for a potential penalty? As Aston Villa lead by a goal to nil. And it looks like it's going to be Douglas Louise to take the penalty. Watkins' mm. record is hit and miss from the spot. He's yeah. missed four of nine, but for Villa, his record is three from five in competitive games Douglas Louise places the ball on the spot so after that VAR check the penalty is awarded I hope Gary O'Neill's not watching this I know after that I know. one exactly on Monday night he's exactly. thinking well how's that given and then the one for Wolves last week at Old Trafford wasn't given definitely but anyway Anthony Taylor has awarded the penalty Pickford's got to be careful no he's shown the yellow card he was delaying he came off his line that will not be tolerated and Pickford now is shown a yellow card by Anthony Taylor. So Douglas Louise, Aston Villa's fans and player of the year from last season, up against Jordan Pickford. Douglas Louise runs up now, right footed. Pickford goes the right way, but Douglas Louise finds the bottom right hand corner, right footed, and from the penalty spot doesn't miss as Aston Villa increased their lead 2 0. Yeah, it could be a long afternoon for Evan. 2-0 up, only 24 minutes gone, and 
Yeah, some of their defenders not being good enough to be fair, but Villa are, are rampant. And yeah, I knew they would change the penalty because, as I said, Watkins has missed a few recently. I wouldn't want to give it up as a striker, but it's a brilliant penalty from Douglas Luiz. Pickford goes the right way and he buries it into that bottom corner. Struck extremely firm despite Pickford going the right way. Nothing he could do, just beaten by the power of the ball. Yeah, sometimes, and you know when it hits that side netting and it, it's in that side netting, sometimes as a goalie, even if you go the right way, you've got no chance of getting it. So Villa lead 2-0 and uh, a long way back for, uh, for Everton for what could be another season where they, they struggle in the, uh, in the Premier League. 25 minutes play, five live sport and BBC sounds and Aston Villa are leading by two goals to nil. As uh, Iwobi and Young will try and conjure something up from a throw that is level with the, the Villa penalty area. So here is Calvert-Lewin, back towards Young. Not a happy return to, uh, to Villa Park, but at least he wins the corner close down by, uh, by Bailey. But... Uh, this is their best bet, you know, set pieces. Yeah. You know. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I think Sean Dyche just asked Calvert-Lewin if he's all right, and he gave him the shake of the head. No, I don't think he is all right. It must be hard. His eye must be closing up and everything. Well... He'll try and get on the end of this Iwobi corner kick in front of the tunnel area here at Villa Park. Iwobi to take it on the left. It's a right-footed one. Martinez, very good take under pressure. Both great, hands. Great goalkeeping. That's what you want. When you, when you know Ever and our threat from set pieces, you want your goalie to come and claim. Very good goalkeeping. And now, in the 26th minute, there is the applause, and not just from the Everton supporters as well. The Aston Villa fans, as Villa Park rises to its feet to acknowledge the Everton supporter Michael Jones who sadly died working on the site of their new stadium last week at the age of 26. There is a banner held aloft. RIP Michael Jones forever in our hearts and in fact that is the identical banner that also is hanging outside the family home in Liverpool. And great that the Aston Villa fans are able to join in with that touching tribute, just as the Liverpool fans did yesterday. Meanwhile, Villa are on the attack. Leon Bailey into the penalty area, pulls it back, it's laid off towards the Army. Left-footed low and saved by Pickford as Villa lead 2-0. Yeah, it's great, great from Villa, great from Everton fans, definitely. And that was a great opportunity there. Good football again, um, Villa are running right, it's a good save from Pickford. Also a nice touch yesterday, Jurgen Klopp and the, uh, the Liverpool players attended the site and Jurgen Klopp laid a, laid a wreath on behalf of Liverpool Football Club. So, Aston Villa, two goals to the good. Dinia, 127 appearances for, uh, for Everton. Now, of course, here at, uh, at Aston Villa, getting a, a run in the side with, uh, with Moreno out injured. Villa look comfortable. No, they do look comfortable. 2 0 up at home. It's, it's, it could, so I'm saying it could get out of hand um, for Evan. They have to stay in the game. Ball over the top. Junior tries to get on the end of it. Was there a shot there by Patterson? The referee, Anthony Taylor, just tells him to get up with a little wave of his left hand. As Dini went to ground far too easily with a, a, the gentlest of nudges from, uh, from Patterson. He was looking for that one. Yeah, he was looking for it. Sean Dyche is screaming at Calvert-Lewin and he said Calvert-Lewin gave him the hand said, no, give me a few minutes. Like, he, he's trying, fair play to him. He's trying to stay on, to the, um, stay on the pitch. Unbeaten three trips to Villa Park as a manager. That record might well be going today as Calvert-Lewin jumps into the back of, uh, of camera. And uh, Dan Juma is uh, the player who's, uh, who's going to be coming on. So it looked like Sean Dyche has already made his mind up. He's getting his final instructions. Now, yeah, he'd already, he'd already, he was stripped off. He just put the bib back on because he just said to Calvert Lewin, "Are you all right?" And he gave him a couple of minutes. He'll give him his instructions. So if he, as soon as he signals over, then he'll make the change. He's a player who Unai Emery will know extremely well. He was uh, good for him at Villarreal, he was wasn't he? Very good. The year that they reached the Champions League semi-finals, that was 2022. He scored 16 goals for, for I mean, Unai Emery. He was a threat for them. He was, he was unplayable at times. Of course, he's, uh, he's on a season loan from, from Villarreal after the uh, 
briefest of spell at, uh, at Tottenham. Didn't really make much of an impact at Tottenham last season. Only the one start in his, uh, his 12 appearances. But Dan Juma will be coming on very, very soon. But uh, for Everton, haven't really posed too much of a threat to Emi Martinez in the, uh, in the Villa goal. Only 34 goals that they scored last season. The joint fewest in their league history. They also only managed 34 in 05-06 as Pickford plays the ball out towards Ashley Young. And he plays it back to the goalkeeper. Getting a, a few whistles and boos from the Holt end behind him away towards our right-hand side. Half an hour played on five live. Here is James Garner for Everton. Patterson on the overlap, back towards Garner, had to slide into the challenge, it was played a little bit ahead of him. The ball though back and Calvert-Lewin seizes on that, for Everton into the penalty box with a cutback, nobody there. Decore will go after it, but Dini's already cleared it for Aston Villa. And there Tarkovsky goes across, away from Watkins, turns, tumbles, but passes the ball back to, uh, to Pickford. Unai Emery just saying, calm down, everything's under control. With his uh, black hair slicked back. As Dinia, nice touch, controls the ball back towards Martinez. And Villa unruffled, play the ball out of defence. 14 minutes to go to half-time. Here is, uh, is Cash, camera. Back with Cash once more. Just wonder now if they've held off from making that change. No, because Dinier, he... I think, sat back down. Yeah, he asked him. He asked Calvert-Lewin. I saw him, he asked him, and he said, no, I'm all, I'm all right for now. So that's why he sat back down and not made the change. Here is uh, Garner Gay. Iwobi. There's little step over, runs forward, left corner of the area, cross though too close to the goalkeeper Martinez, easily claimed. He's got to do more, Wobi. When he was at Arsenal, he's a winger taking people on, he's got to be more direct. He was good last season, but it's, that's a nothing cross. Carver Lewin and Decore can't work with that. Started the last 52 games, he knows it as well, just looking at him, he's just looking to the skies, Wobi. Disappointed with that, uh, that ball into the, uh, the penalty area. Villa still lead 2-0 two, two here at Villa Park as uh, Martinez drops the ball to his feet, there was no pressure, so he just didn't do anything. Then when Calvert-Lewin raced towards him, played it towards Contra, and now it's with Cash along the ground. Here is Diaby over the halfway line, looking to combine, but Ashley Young checked the, uh, the run of, uh, of Diaby. Just experience, isn't it? Yeah. Just gets his body there and says, you're not going past me. You can beat me in a race, but you're not going past me. Here is now uh, Tarkovsky. As Sean Dyche just has a word, he calls his two trusty lieutenants off the bench, Ian Wone and Steve Stone, just to uh, to have a word. That was a nice turn by James Garner. This should be a yellow card for Dinia. It was a tug back on, uh, on Garner, and indeed the yellow card is shown. It's the third yellow card of this, uh, this game so far. So Dinia joins Douglas Louise and Jordan Pickford in the, uh, in the notebook of, uh, of Anthony Taylor. Oh, Nana. I mean, you'd think that they're going to sign Nonto. Jack Harrison should be available. He's on loan from uh, Leeds United. Villa were in for him, but were put off when he failed the medical. He's got a hip injury. September, they're expecting him to be available for, uh, for Everton. It feels inevitable that they will get Nonto, who's handed in that transfer request at Ellen Road. But they are still looking to add further firepower before September the 1st on but deadline they're in, day. They're in for Che Adams, aren't they? Yeah. So that, that's another one that they're hoping to get. As Dinia sends over the cross. Diaby! What an effort that was! Off his right foot, his he weaker it. foot. He saves it. Pickford, Pickford saves it. Pickford got a touch to it. Yeah, it's a great save. Onto the post. The technique's magnificent, oh. Deno. It's unbelievable technique from um, Diaby. It's great technique. Ah, it's a good save from Pickford. Brilliant Very save. good save from Pickford, but great technique from Diaby. It was a thunderous effort. He's off the ground when he hits it. Both feet are off the ground. Hits it right footed. What was he, 10 yards out from goal? Yeah. Pickford gets a touch onto the post and Cannon's behind for a corner kick. That would have been a spectacular third goal. He is going to be some player. Corner towards McGinn, floated forward, hits it on the volley first time, backing away, lifted into the penalty area. Watkins couldn't get on the end of it and out it goes for, uh, for a goal kick. Yeah, they're rampant at the moment, Aston Villa, very rampant. Villa ever need to get the next goal in this game. If Diaby had made that 3-0, it would, it would have been game over for sure. Even now, 
you're happy watching it again, as you say, about the technique from uh, from Diaby. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's, the technique's brilliant. It's, that's the most difficult skill, to control the volley like that. Credit Pitford, really good save. They have recruited excellently during the uh, the summer, Aston Villa. Pau Torres, Tielemans on a free. Uh, Moussa Diaby coming in for a club record signing of just under £52 million. Pounds. And it was uh, a fine effort. And you fear, from an Everton point of view, had they got that third goal, that would be it. Yeah, it would have been it, definitely. Everton haven't really created anything, not creating anything for Calvert-Lewin, can't get on the ball. Villa dominating them in midfield, so it's a struggle for them at the moment. Well, they produced that excellent win away from home. It was a real coupon buster when they trounced Brighton at the Amex last season. As I said earlier, that they've... Uh, four and beaten on their travels in the uh, in the Premier League that record's going to come undone today as they're 2-0 down against this uh, resurgent Villa side Dinia with the cross aimed towards Bailey headed away by Young Bailey though will get there first he's closed down Bailey does well to keep the ball in play he's glued to his uh, boot there as he came away from the byline back out towards Leon Bailey Bailey cuts it back, Diaby lays it off, Cash right-hand side, Everton have got everybody back by Calvert-Lewin at the moment, can't work over the cross from the right, they're keeping the ball though well, was that a foul, Dakari on camera? The referee is actually saying Calvert-Lewin's going to have to come off, he's stopping play, and he's pointing to his head is Anthony Taylor, yeah, because, because Calvert-Lewin is struggling with that head injury yeah, from earlier. Yeah, he's still struggling, it was a big old heavy collision. For the sake of one, for the sake of off. one game, yeah, this don't make it worse. You need to get him off. He, the player's safety is much more important. So once again, the physio is having a word. Anthony Taylor is also checking on uh, Calvert Lewin. Onana is just crouched behind him. But the fact that he's gone down and what I, it must have been a good 15, 20 minutes since that initial injury. Yes. And if right. he's still struggling now, why take the risk? Exactly, don't take the risk. As you see, you can see the lump just way above where his cheekbone is. It's, it's starting to swell up. It, it, don't take that risk, not at all. Well, after getting his instructions a good five minutes ago, Dan Juma now takes off the white bib and Arna Dan Juma is going to be coming on and Calvert Lewin is going to be coming off. And indeed, he's got like an ice pack that is just being applied to underneath his, uh, his right eye and he's going to go straight down the tunnel I would suspect here Calvert, Calvert Lewin yeah, you can see the swelling on the eye as you're looking at the, the TV monitors there you feel for him he can't catch anything at the moment it's a break at the moment but hopefully he won't be out for too long further frustration for the unfortunate Dominic Calvert Lewin what will be in interesting is whether this goes down as a concussion substitution yeah. for, uh, for, for Everton. Because if that is the case, then they'll still have three more opportunities either side of, uh, of the half-time chance to make more alterations. So Dan Juma is going to be coming on and, uh, and Calvert-Lewin goes off. 38 minutes yeah. play. Interesting as well that they've gone for Dan Juma rather than Neil Mope. For somebody to play through the middle as a former striker. Yeah, I know. And I just and that must be if you're Neil Mope, you're a bit disappointed because he got the opportunity last week, missed chances, but you've got to keep backing strikers, keep getting him out there. Eventually one will go in the back of the net. So he must be sitting there thinking you brought on a wide man and took off and, and brought on yeah for a striker. So he'll be disappointed. Free kick then to uh, to Aston Villa. Douglas Louise to take it. He's pulled that out towards Dinia. Controls it first time. Left corner of the area. Watkins gets it. Uh, camera gets it out from underneath his feet. Back towards McGinn. McGinn turns away from Garner. Forward to Dinia. First time cross from the left. Into the penalty area. Watkins there. Lifts it up in the air rather than going goalwards. Everton get the ball away. Flags up on this near side. It wouldn't have counted offside. And he looks like he's picked up an injury there. Watkins. He was stretching, wasn't he? So... As it could he have pulled tank or did he collide with the post? I'm not sure. We have to see the replay. But if there's no one near him, then and he's stretching. What a wicked ball in! Great there, ball from Luca Dinia. Unbelievable, unbelievable ball into the box. Watkins is on his feet, and he's uh, he's just trying to stamp his foot down to try and shake off that uh, that knock. He really did. Yeah, uh, into yeah the he post. went into the post. Yeah. As you say, he was stretching for it. All he managed to do was knock it up in the air. 
couldn't direct it goalwards. Long ball downfield towards uh, Dan Juma. Easily gathered in by the goalkeeper at the front edge of his penalty area. 39 minutes played on five live. And it's Aston Villa 2, Everton 0. Commentary to come at 4.30. West Ham United against Chelsea in that London derby. That'll be followed by 6.06, 0.8085909693. And the Monday night club tomorrow night from 7 with Mark Chapman will dissect all of the weekend's action, including, I'm sure, the disappointment of uh, that Women's World Cup final where Spain beat England by a goal to nil. After the Mary Earps penalty save, we were both watching it in the packed press room. We felt that if England could have got an equaliser, they might have gone on to, uh, yeah, to win, did. but it never materialised. Yeah, you're right. She's been the best goalkeeper in the tournament, though. She, she's been outstanding. So uh, Martinez plays it short to Conta, Cash. Near side the right, closed down by Iwobi. Forward it goes. That was headed away and out of play by Tarkovsky. Sean Dyche once again in the ear of the fourth official, Robert Madley. He's constantly just chirping away. I'd love to see Dyche on the touchline in a tracksuit, though, instead of the, the trousers in the shirt all the time. Yeah. But that's his style. <laughs> yeah. Can win. Rain, <laughs> snow, snow, hail, <laughs> anything. We'll always wear that white shirt. Good guy though, one of the good guys. Got a lot of time for Sean Dyche. Really good guy. Four and a half minutes to uh, to the break. Villa comfortable, nice steady pace as they're keeping the ball. And Everton had more shots on target against Fulham. Nine than in any other game last season. But they haven't been able to replicate that here today. You just, look at, at you just look at it then, because I understand don't go and press, but sometimes you have to go and press because you can cause them problems. Never once have they tested Aston Villa like Newcastle did. Villa played such a high line. I'll just quit, try and move the ball one and two touch. They're not doing that at the moment, Denno. Here is Bailey. That's the voice of the former Irish international Clinton Morrison, who, despite being a former Birmingham striker, received a friendly welcome on arrival into uh, to Villa Park today, didn't you? Yeah, because I said my one to watch this season was Diaby, so they've probably seen that. And my one that might overachieve is Aston Villa, so they've probably seen me say nice stuff about them, so they've given me a bit of love. Still a blue nose, though, and it always will be a blue nose. <laughs> <laughs> That'll go down well at St Andrews. Exactly. <laughs> That's all that matters. Pickford to take the free kick for Everton. Left footed, high downfield. McGinn on the score sheet for uh, for Aston Villa today. Gets the ball away with it, a header. It'll be a, a Villa throw on that, uh, that far side. Hasn't been much to cheer so far for those Everton supporters who have packed the bottom tier and the top tier of that stand in that end third as we look away on the far side here at Villa Park as the, uh, the flags gentle breeze here at Villa Park still pockets of blue skies as we edge our way towards half time I'm sure we'll have further reaction from Sydney as well after England's defeat in that Women's World Cup final with uh, with Steve Crossman we might even indeed look ahead to West Ham Chelsea who knows told both will be coming up as uh, during the uh, the interval five live sport and BBC sounds here is Bailey holding on to the ball Runs away from De Corey, back to concert. Now towards Douglas Louise. No pressure on the ball for Douglas Louise. Able to pass the ball out towards the left. Dinia. Patterson goes towards him. Back towards Douglas Louise. Shrugs off De Corey, who scored that precious goal on the last day of last season. So you just look at Evan. Sorry, Dana. You look at their midfield. Not really a lot of creativity. A lot of hard working, and that's where they're missing a creative player. Ball up towards Watkins, side on to goal, tries to take it into his stride. Dispossessed by Tarkovsky, steps out of defence, hits the ball over the top towards Dan Juma. Consul will go across with Dan Juma, running through the middle. Everton say, plans are saying on the far side that Dan Juma was being pulled there by Consul, but Anthony Taylor, the referee, was up with play, holds on to it and allows the blue shirts to get forward into the Aston Villa half, and it's with it's Garner. Slow. It's just slow, though, it's slow build up, very slow build up. Onana, diagonal ball, Young forward, near side the left, up against Cash, back pedals, down towards the byline, works over the cross, almost was going to reach Garner, headed back by Onana, 
it was good play by it was Dinia who was tucked in wasn't it the, uh, the left back to head it away because Garner was just waiting for it to drop he was they just don't have enough bodies in the box it's good play from Ashley Young he's tried to get down this left hand side good ball into the back post and you're just thinking go and attack it to Corey Anana Garner get into the box you need a goal Shea Adams scored a, a 94th minute winner for Southampton yesterday as Martinez again hangs on to the ball. He was closed down quickly, but chipped it away inside his six-yard area. But that experienced striker they badly need to bolster and provide a little bit of presence, a bit of firepower as uh, Keane hits a, a flat ball forward out of defence and Patterson couldn't bring that under control despite the outstretched right boot at around knee height. And it went out away from him and out for a goal kick to uh, to Aston Villa. Should have a little bit of additional time here, Clinton, with the uh, the injuries, particularly to Calvert Lewin, with the the clash of heads initially, and then the fact that he went down and required further treatment. Six minutes. Subsequently, meant that he's left the field of play. Oh wow! Nine. Nine. I would say that's about fair. But a, a minimum of nine minutes that we're now into. So if you're wanting to hear further reaction and there will be a slight delay with those nine minutes after England's disappointment in Sydney. Here is Onana to Patterson, midway through his own half. Patterson hits the ball over the top, Danjuma making the run. Pau Torres goes with him. Danjuma, former teammates, of course, at, uh, at Villarreal. And Torres just stands there and Danjuma runs away from him. Right side of the penalty area, good ball back by Patterson to Danjuma. Very good save from Martinez. Quickly off his line, the angle was tight, made a smothering save, diverts it behind for a corner kick. He's been good, you know why he's been good? He wants to run in behind Danjuma. He runs in behind, he creates stuff, that's their first shot and they've got a spark. And he's in, in on goal and I'm looking at him and thinking, who's going to get into the box? Not one of the Corey or Nana make, um, make break their net to get in the box. They have to do that, they're losing the game. But good play from Danjuma, good save from Martinez. But you said earlier on that they lack pace and all of a sudden now they've got an outlet for that yeah, ball Yeah, because he forward. wants to run in behind. Defenders don't like to run towards their own goal. It was good play from Dan Juma. Corner kick then for Everton, far side the right. Should be an outswinger from Ashley Young. Here it comes now, headed out by Watkins inside a crowded penalty area as Villa lead by two goals to nil. Patterson hoists the ball back. Tarkovsky stayed forward, gets a touch with his head. Uh, Dan Juma won't keep that ball in play. If anything, the touch from Tarkovsky made Danjuma's task harder to keep the ball in play it's a goal kick yeah you're right I think if he had left it Danjuma would have got on the ball but they've got a threat now he is a threat and he will cause problems he's a talented individual and needs more. I was surprised he didn't start him in one of the wide areas anyway because I think their midfield that they've got set up is very workmanlike but not a lot of creativity the voice of Clinton Morrison on BBC Radio 5 Live 5 Live's Premier League Sunday where Aston Villa are leading by two goals to nil John McGinn after 18 minutes and then a Douglas Louise penalty six minutes later. Dina cuts the ball out for uh, for Villa. One back though by Patterson. Good signing by Patterson. Again, he hasn't been blessed with uh, with good fortune with the injury problems that uh, that he's had. But the uh, the former Rangers right back, extremely promising Scottish international, is now he's forward. Garner. Feeds the ball into his feet, sends over the cross first time, just over the head of Iwobi. Yeah, they got, he's got to be better, Patterson. He gets into them areas, it's a good run, good play between him and Ghana, but he's just he's got to flash that across because they don't want crosses in the air because they're not a big side, especially now with Dan Juma and missing Calvert-Lewin. But Everton over the last five minutes have been better though than on the ball. Well, it's a throw to, uh, to Aston Villa. That Massey Cash is going to take midway through his own half. We're in stoppage time, an additional nine minutes. What is interesting, actually, is that the, the giant screens here, they're meant to tick on after 45. They That's are, in it directed. because we were at Brentford last week and it did tick on. Yeah, but they've yeah. actually kept it. They've stuck it at 45, so the support is now inside the stadium. You're thinking, well, how much longer are we going to play? When can I go and get my tea and pie? And they can't. Would you want another pie? No, nah, no. Nah, that's no. enough for me for the day, thanks, mate. Um... So it's hard to gauge how much further than of the nine minutes. I would imagine that the uh, the operators of the the digital. Oh, in fact, we're almost there already. But the supporters wouldn't know. That was a foul. That would be a yellow card for Keane. Just pulled back on uh, on Watkins. So the the yellow cards are slowly but surely totting up two apiece. Pickford and now Keane for Everton. 
Douglas Luiz and Dinia for Villa. Yeah, he, he, he rolled him. It's good centre forward play from Ollie Watkins. He rolled him and Keane knew he was beating him. And, and they're the ones you do where you you take them fouls and your teammates are happy. Hearts at half time lead Partick 2 0 in the Scottish League Cup second round. No goals as yet between Hibbs and Wraith Rovers. Kilmarnock Celtic underway. Talking with pies. If you ever go to Rugby Park, best pies in Scotland. Oh, is it? Oh, I tell you. <laughs> Have you done all the grounds? I've done a few in Scotland. <laughs> I mean, I'm partial to the pie regardless where I go, <laughs> but at Rugby Park, they're, they're, they're one of the finest. Dinia, meanwhile, with the cross, into the penalty area, bouncing ball. And it's gathered in by, uh, by Pickford. And he clears it long, up towards Dan Juma. Again, that was that early release. We've been playing now for nine and a half, no, four and a half minutes of the added on time. So uh, here is uh, McGinn. I was a little bit confused. All that talk of pies has got me flustered. <laughs> Here is Pau Torres to, uh, to Dinia. Villa lead 2-0. Very, very comfortable for the home side. Yeah, it is. If I said earlier, Everton just need to get the next goal in this game. It will give them a boost. And does Sean Dyche make a few more changes? Does he put Mope up front and Dan Juma in one of the wide areas? That, that, was that quiet inside Villa Park for the time? While you were talking, I just took my headphones off a little bit. It's Dinia with a cross from the left. Bailey tries to get on the end of it, over his head out for a goal kick. You could actually hear Unai Emery barking out the orders from the touchline. And yeah. we were here for the first time after uh, uh, the lockdown, wasn't yeah, it, with COVID, the yeah. COVID. Yeah. And therefore, we did get a real insight, because the first game was here against Sheffield United, United do you remember? It was, yeah, it was. That was when the... Was it, uh, the that uh, famous... The occlusion, was that what they yes, called it? Yes, that's it. Sheffield United were ruled out. Ruled out that goal, yep. Yeah. <laughs> But that did give us a real insight when we it were did. able to hear the, uh, the managers with obviously no supporters inside Villa Park. But despite Villa Park being full today, you could hear the, uh, the words of Unai Emery with his side still leading 2-0. He wasn't happy. Still doesn't cut a particularly happy figure at the moment. His arms are folded, head bowed for a time. But uh, Everton at the moment with a ball at the edge of their own penalty area. Pickford say, give it back to me with, uh, with Keane. He wants to get involved as uh, does Jordan Pickford. Instead, he finds his fellow central defensive partner, Tarkovsky. Down the line it goes on this near side, cut out by Cash. Back towards Tarkovsky, heads it forward. Garner Gay towards Ashley Young and Villa have to go back to, uh, to Pickford. And we've been playing for six and a half minutes in uh, stoppage time here at Villa Park. Now it's with Douglas Luiz, bouncing ball hard to control. Runs through towards McGinn. McGinn, he finds Diaby, strikes the back of the heel of the left boot he wanted it to try and get it out from underneath his feet he was unfortunate Bailey the underlap run from Cash right side of the penalty area back towards Bailey Bailey with a cross towards the far post over the head of a leaping Watkins out for a goal kick to no Villa yeah it's all too easy for Aston Villa though like the, <coughs> Evan <laughs> when they're going to press they're pressing individually not pressing as a team you can see short Dyche getting frustrated but when Villa do move it one and two touch they're a threat, they're causing a lot of problems, in particular Bailey on this right-hand side and DRB getting into pockets, causing problems. Can I just say that, um, and it's nothing to do with eating too many pies, but this commentary box here is a little bit tight yeah, and I might have to, it's nothing to do with my waistline, it's more to do with my legs. Yeah, they are a bit cramped, mine are like that to be fair. No, you're looking very trim at the moment then, don't worry, you've had a good summer. <laughs> well, I know that's a lie, but I'll pay you the £10 later. <laughs> Walked in about six foot two, six foot three. I'm going to walk out about five foot eleven. I think. <laughs> Can't wait for the halftime whistle to just so I can stand up. Stand I keep looking up. at the, the clock, thinking, "Come on, blow your halftime whistle." No, it is cramped. It's very cramped. I agree it, with you, mate. My knees are a bit sore as well. If Steve Crossman asks any additional questions at half time, you can take them all. I don't mind taking them. I don't mind. Team player. Yeah, a team player for sure. Douglas Louise, Cash, midway through his own half. And again, Cash is midway. It's very, very comfortable for uh, for Villa here. Back it goes. Of course, the Villa supporters will be looking forward to the potential of uh, a good European run in the uh, in the Conference League. Should they see off Hibs, uh, so that's going to be a, a yellow card for a late challenge on uh, for Adrissa Garner Gay. And indeed, there it is from uh, from Anthony Taylor. So that's the the fifth yellow card that we've had in the uh, in the first half. I don't think you can have any complaints against a former Hibs player in John McGinn. Yeah, he's, McGinn's been very good. And you know what I like about John McGinn? When the ball comes into him, he scans and he always got that roll where he can just pin you and roll you really good. 
Jenkin, I'm sure, will get a, an excellent reception when he goes to, uh, to Easter Road. He left, what, five years ago? It's uh, the away leg is at Easter Road on Thursday, and then Hibs come here on the 31st. There's half-time. Aston Villa 2, Everton 0. Clinton. Yeah, it's been a good half for Aston Villa. Obviously, Everton losing Calvert-Lewin is a huge blow for them, but Danjuma's come on and been lively, but two really well-worked goals from Aston Villa, and they've been on the front foot. Fans going happy, and Unai Emery's happy. Really positive start from Aston Villa in the first half. John McGinn from close range after 18 minutes and after Pickford is adjudged to have caught Watford with an outstretched flailing arm. Douglas Ruiz converted the penalty right-footed bottom right-hand corner. 24 minutes was the second goal and after nine minutes of additional time, half-time at Villa Park, Aston Villa 2, Everton 0. Steve? Ian, just four or five questions for you, if I may. Uh -huh. No, no, Clinton's your man. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for both of you, we haven't got any time, so we'll be back with you for second half commentary. Thank you very much, Ian Dennis and Clint Morrison at Villa Park um, because we've got so much over the course of the next 15 minutes much more reaction to come uh, to England's defeat to Spain in the World Cup final so the former England international Anita Asante is going to join us we will hear from the England captain Millie Bright who's been speaking to Gary Flintoff as well and we'll be back to Budapest the World Athletics Championships ongoing Katerina Johnson-Thompson of Great Britain could win gold in the heptathlon later today there's only the 800 metres to go at 5 o'clock and she leads the field we'll also take you to Kilmarnock ahead of their game with Celtic that's a 3 o'clock kickoff in the Scottish League Cup. Leeds Warrington in Super League as well gets underway at three. So lots to do, including our first trip of the day to the London Stadium ahead of West Ham Chelsea in full at half four. We'll do it all after the news with Joe Critcher. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. England's captain Millie Bright is promising the Lionesses will bounce back after they were defeated 1-0 by Spain in the final of the FIFA Women's World Cup. She says they're hugely disappointed, but when the hurt has died down, they'll be proud to have finished second. A senior Conservative MP is joining calls for the independent inquiry into Lucy Letby to be led by a judge. The nurse was convicted on Friday of murdering seven babies and attempting to kill another six at the Countess of Chester Hospital. Steve Bryan says the inquiry needs to have the power to compel witnesses to give evidence. Russia's first moon mission in almost 50 years has failed. Its Luna 25 spacecraft spun out of control and splashed into the moon. It was set to explore a part of the moon which scientists think could hold frozen water and precious elements. And Waitrose and John Lewis are offering free hot drinks to on-duty police officers in a bid to deter shoplifters, but they have to bring a reusable cup. It comes as shops report rising levels of retail crime. Time for the game to start. Come on! <laughs> Summer just got even better with BBC iPlayer. So what should I do then? Join blue lights for all the drama. At least try to act like police officers. Don't think I won't fail all three of you if I have to. Go behind bars with man like Mobeen. Turns out someone can leave their cell. OK, yeah. <laughs> and follow the mind games with the Traitors Australia. Everyone is so suspicious of everyone. I think it's you. Watch on BBC iPlayer. This is Five Live Sports with Steve Crossman. On Five Live, listen on BBC Sounds. At half-time at Villa Park, it is Aston Villa 2, Everton nil. Full second-half commentary on the way. The big story of the day, of course, England beaten 1-0 in the final of the Women's World Cup by Spain. Captain Olga Carmona scoring the only goal of the final. Millie Bright on the way, but let's hear first from the player of the tournament, Spain's Aitana Bonmati. For this moment, it's unbelievable. I'm so proud because we did a great tournament. We suffered, but also we enjoyed it. And we deserve it. We deserve it. How did this team come together so well, given last two years, controversy, worry, but tonight, perfect? Everyone uh, knew the, the goal at the beginning of the preparation of the tournament. Everyone is competitive. Everyone is has um, a high mentally, a strong mentally to win. Uh, we have been working a lot of years for, for this moment and we have it. We have the trophy. 
there were marked scenes at the end of the game as well where Spain's players celebrated at least initially completely separately from the coaching staff. Lots of Spain players have been very unhappy with the Spanish setup and with the coach Jorge Vilder and there've been allegations made by Spanish players against him when it comes to the behaviour around the team. Lots of players didn't even want to be involved in the World Cup. 15 of them said they would stay at home and most of them did so there is certainly a lot more to come on that story. The Spanish FA by the way tweeted Vilda in Jorge Vilda the Spanish coach who many people have wanted out. Great effort from England across the course of the tournament even though of course they lost in the final. Here's their captain Millie Bright. First off, I think they were definitely on top. Um, second off, I think we came out and left everything out there. We played more like ourselves, more um, high tempo, you know, more jewels won, more aggression. Um, first off, just, you know, we were just that couple of yards off them and then they just gained momentum, had the chance, but equally we had ours, hitting, hitting the crossbar, creating good chances um, that, you know, in other games we've been putting in the back of the net. So in football, that's the difference. And especially in, in finals against top teams, you get limited chances, you have to be ruthless, but, you know, today just just weren't our day and yeah congrats to, to Spain. It's always a team game but today in Mary Earps there was an outstanding performer she yeah. kept you in the game I mean yeah. did you believe that penalty save was going to give you the momentum to find the equaliser? Yeah I think we always believe I think you know we've been in this position before where we've conceded and we've brought it back um, and I think as a group we're very good at staying on task and keeping the belief I think the inner belief throughout this tournament has been phenomenal and that's been a, a key part of, of us and, and our character and our spirit um, um, but Mary's been incredible. There's no wonder she, she won the Golden Glove. She's been outstanding the whole tournament. Um, so credit to Merps. But yeah, I think as a team, I think we can hold our heads high. We've literally left everything out there and we've gave everything to this tournament. Millie Bright there with Gary Flintoff. Let's bring in the former England international, Anita Asante. Anita, it'll be no consolation, but in the end are there no complaints? Did the better team win? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we, we saw that the better side won in the end. Um, and, and it's fine margins, obviously, in a final that's so finely matched uh, like that. But um, England just weren't at the races in the first half. And, you know, despite creating some good chances, I think Spain obviously dominated possession and, and it was just a bit too much in the end. I've seen a few people on social media saying that they feel a little less heartbroken today than they did after the the semi-final in 2019 when, when England fought so hard and lost to the USA. Is, is that how you feel or not? No, I do feel like that, actually, because I think we saw the momentum from the Euros. Um, you know, they've gone again to another final, you know, consecutively. They've, they've set the building blocks. And I think we're set for a, a golden era for women and girls football to come, you know. And that's largely because of the investment from the National Lottery as well over the past 10 years that's created an environment for this level of success. And, and they will go on again, you know, to, to do that. I think they will reach many more finals in the future but unfortunately today just wasn't their day. I just outlined everything that's been going on behind the scenes with this Spanish team. It, I mean it is remarkable that the players have been able to do this even amongst all of the controversy and all of the fallout between them and the coaching staff. Yeah well it just shows I think the quality within that Spanish team and the squad as a whole. Um, they were able to not you know, three world-class players weren't part of that squad um, and they still managed to perform throughout it and reach a final, win the final. Um, they've got an absolute incredible pipeline of talent and obviously the m mentality and resilience to to, to do that as well is, uh, is pretty incredible. And you talked about the bright future. Obviously, so much was achieved by this England team winning the Euros. Will there be further achievements from getting to the final of a World Cup, even though they, they couldn't quite get over the line? Absolutely. I think now they've been there, they've experienced it. Um, you know, we've always talked about how they've inspired the nation. They've done that again. You know, I think the future is bright for our sport. And I, I think, like I said before, we are going to embark, embark on another golden era for the women's game. And, and that's thanks to them and the way they've performed over the last, you know, few years, reaching, winning a final, getting to the final again. And again, you know, investment at the, at the grassroots level, you know, is going to create even more opportunities and access because of the investment from the National Lottery and the FA. Um, they'll be able to keep inspiring, uh, you know, girls and boys across the nation for years to come. Anita, thank you so much. Anita Asante, former England international with us there. Uh, there'll be lots more to come on that as well. Let's bring in our correspondent, John Murray. Uh, John, before we talk about the game that, that you're about to commentate on at, at 4.30, you were, 
You were listening to the World Cup final, of course, on Five Live. Yeah, well, I was, yes. I've had a bit of a circuitous uh, route today, so I was watched a bit, listened to a bit. I was actually walking along the street in Stratford, uh, listened to it on the, on my phone via BBC Sound. So I actually did what I keep telling people to do on the radio every week. <laughs> You can also rewind back, but not <laughs> now. Can. Not now. We've got no, things. It, was, to... <laughs> um, it just had it. I don't know about you and whether I'm sure the same sort of thing has been said, but it just had the feeling in the first half that um, it, it was going to be Spain's day. That's the that's the kind of feeling I had. Yeah, no, I think a lot of people feel like that. It's difficult to know what to feel about uh, this Chelsea team, though, isn't it, so far this yep. season? Because yet again, more ins. Yeah, more ins, which takes it. If you remember this time last week, we were talking about how they'd almost got to 50 deals. Do you remember? Mm. Since the uh, Clear Lake Capital Consortium took over just over a year ago. Well, obviously, they're past that now. So they've gone past 50 deals. Uh, and obviously, the expectation is that Caicedo, as uh, the man who set the record for the transfer fee between involving British clubs, will come into the team so it'll be really interesting to see how he fits in how he looks because it's he's, he's obviously had a time hasn't he over the course of the past couple of weeks or so and uh, you know it'll probably be a relief for him to get onto the field um, so we'll see how Chelsea look I thought it was uh, it, it had that feel both Chelsea and Liverpool last Sunday of early days mm. and uh, you know so and so they'll they'll change again today to an extent anyway get the impression that Chelsea aren't done yet either and neither are West Ham no West Ham similarly you know who will who will start for them in the midfield now that Alvarez is here and has got his feet under the table but of course Ward Prowse as well uh, after they drew 1-1 at Bournemouth in the opening match, the expectation is that James Ward-Prowse, who barely missed a match for Southampton, uh, would come into the midfield. Thank you, John. That's correspondent John Murray at the London Stadium. He'll be alongside Paul Robinson for full commentary of West Ham versus Chelsea at 4.30. Don't forget Villa 2, Everton nil half-time at Villa Park. We'll be back there shortly for second half commentary. And as we keep telling you, we could have a gold medal for Great Britain on day two of the World Athletics Championships today. Katerina Johnson-Thompson leads the heptathlon going into the final event, which is the 800 metres. And Catherine Merry has the details. Katerina Johnson-Thompson, the 2019 world champion, arrived back here in Budapest at the stadium for day two in the silver medal position this morning but a 654 long jump put her in the lead and then she threw a near two meter personal best in the javelin she's in the lead she's 27 points ahead of the Netherlands Anouk Vetter the 800 metres is the last event in the heptathlon to come later. And also tonight, lots of other British interest, including semis and finals of the men's 100 metres. Can Zarnell Hughes win gold for the British team? Yeah, Zarnell Hughes, fastest man in the world this year. Here goes in heat number two. British interest in heat three with Reese Prescott and in the first heat where part-time accountant Eugene Amodadze runs for Great Britain. So that will be absolutely fascinating. Half past four, those heats start. And as I say, five o'clock for the final event of the heptathlon and Katerina Johnson-Thompson going for gold. In the Scottish League Cup this afternoon, Hearts lead championship side Partick Thistle 3-0 at half time. Hibs also the Premiership facing championship opposition in Wraith Rovers. That's 0-0 just into the second half. The three o'clock kickoff, Kilmarnock versus Celtic. Kenny Crawford is watching. Thanks, Steve. No, no, here after six minutes between these two sides. Five teams already in the hat for the Scottish League Cup quarterfinals. Kilmarnock and Celtic trying to secure one of the three remaining spots. A repeat of last season's semi final, which Celtic won before going on to lift the trophy. Um, and Joe Hart, it, oh, just a chance for Celtic there. It was Matt O'Reilly through and Will Dennis saved. But yeah, still no, no here. Kilmarnock are unchanged from the 11 that drew with Hearts in the league. Celtic hand debuts to Gustav Lagerbilke, who's a Swedish centre back, and Norwegian midfielder Odin Holm. And a word of warning to the visitors Kelly have beaten Rangers already here at Rugby Park this season. Uh, after the thrills of the Challenge Cup final last week, we're back to Super League action and the race for the playoffs. Leeds Rhinos taking on Warrington Wolves just underway. Dave Woods. Yes, we played four and a half minutes as a game that Leeds desperately need to win. They're just on the coattails of the top six at the moment, but they're losing already. Leeds nil, Warrington four. Dufty with a grubber kick, the Warrington fullback chasing himself. Touchdown as well. The video referee has given it. Ratchford missing the goal from the touchline, but Warrington off to a flyer. They lead here by four points to nil. And in the Championship earlier today, Norwich beat Millwall by three goals to one American striker Josh Sargent's been heavily linked uh, with a move to Leeds United but he's a Norwich player for now and he scored one of their goals in that 3-1 victory so full commentary on the way at half past four of West Ham versus Chelsea but let's take you back to Villa Park for the second half with Clinton Morrison and Ian Dennis
Thanks, Steve. Yep, two teams are just on their way out now. Everton are first to emerge. Tarkovsky coming out for Everton. They made that uh, change. Just to confirm as well, it wasn't a concussion substitution. It was a, a normal substitution seven minutes before half-time for Dunjuma to replace Calvert-Lewin. Doesn't look like there's going to be many other alterations at half-time. I did say Everton would make one, did they? I, look, I saw Dobbin go in. Young Lewis Dobbin was on yeah. that derby last year. Which means by making this change now at half time, they will still have two more opportunities in the second half to make further changes if required. But you're right, Lewis Dobbin coming on. He had a lone spell at Derby County in League One last season. Five goals in 54 appearances. He's only 20 years of age. Looks quite slight. Sporting the number 61 shirt. And so he has come on. Idrissa gone again. And it's Idrissa Gay who's, yeah. uh, who's, who's gone off. He so did pick up that yellow card, didn't he? Then, no. He did, yes. Yeah, yeah. so that's the uh, the change. So Everton have Pickford in goal. Patterson, Keane, Tarkovsky and Young. Iwobi, Onana, uh, Garner and Decore. And now Dobbin and Danjuma will be up front for, uh, for Everton in their royal blue shirts, shorts and socks as they play from left to right. Aston Villa... No changes. Martinez in goal. Cash, Conza, Pau, Torres and Dina. McGinn, Douglas Louise, the two scorers. Camera, Diaby, Watkins and Leon Bailey. Just waiting for the referee, Anthony Taylor. There's the whistle. We're back underway. Five Live Sport and BBC Sounds. Aston Villa in their claret and sky blue shirts and white shorts. Playing from right to left. Leading by two goals to nil. And straight away, Dobbin is thrust into the action. And from the rebound, it comes out to James Garner, and he hits it first time, fires it in, goes out for, uh, for a goal kick, and it will be Martinez to uh, to take it. Let's see what uh, Dobbin can do. He just did well there, he went past Cash, and he just went to the byline and went to Garner. Why are they checking? Checking something. There's a, a slight delay. Anthony Taylor is just saying to Martinez and Pau Torres, just wait. What could that check have been for? Well, well his check's complete anyway, uh, so... But again, as a, as a paying spectator inside the you ground, know. you're not aware that there is a check exactly. going on. Exactly, it's what on. Over time, we've got used to it. There's a delay, or oh, it must be VAR. There's a camera from the short goal kick. By the way, there was, a, there was a few, if you pardon the pun, trying to get in on the action of the, of the pies. Yeah, Henry Winter sent me a text. Radio Pive Live. <laughs> Henry, very sharp. <laughs> and, and, and Stephen Warnock, former Villa and Liverpool defender, of course, in an international sent me a text. You don't function when you're hungry. Yeah, that's a good point. Stevie would have been in there anyway. He wouldn't have had one. He would have had a couple. Yeah. I mean, I, I refrained at half time, but it would have had to have dragged Stephen out. He'd be on for his third. But then he'd just go for like a 10 mile run after, so he'd be fine. Well, <laughs> he wouldn't sit on him. Yeah, I'll do a 12 mile <laughs> run. I'll top that. Here is McGinn. Villa, who had that. Excellent effort from uh, Diaby, gone in as well, would have been leading by even more goals. As it is, it's the uh, the two that they've scored. As uh, the little flick from uh, from Diaby, central area, looking towards Watkins. Back it goes to to uh, to Pickford. Watkins will give chase. Michael Keane releases the ball. Onana back towards Pickford. Has to be a first time clearance. Ollie Watkins, last season under Steven Gerrard, two goals in 13 appearances. When Unai Emery took over. 14 goals in 27. Yeah, because Mark's he, improvement. I think you know Emery wants him to do less work and more in goal involvements in and around the box. Oli Watkins is one of the hardest working centre forwards in the Premier League. Maybe sometimes works too hard, and that's a crazy thing for me to say. But he's in the right places now. He's getting between the sticks and scoring goals, which is good for him. Pau Torres was said uh, it was like going out for a, a Sunday stroll there with the ball at his feet. There was no pressure on him whatsoever. He just walked his way towards the halfway line but Villa have ultimately lost the ball and now Iwobi that's just too far ahead of Iwobi just sense the frustration of Sean Dyche patrolling that technical area oh, he's pulled his hamstring oh, and now Iwobi. that frustration will be compounded for Sean Dyche because within six yards of the Everton manager Iwobi's felt his hamstring he's back to his feet but he is he's feeling his hamstring and Anthony Taylor's just checking are you okay and that uh, He's been one of a consistent performer yeah, for, uh, for Everton. And they've got a few injuries at the moment as well, in particular in them wide areas as well. Then I, obviously, you said 
no Harrison, obviously, no Dwight McNeil at the moment, who they're missing in their wide areas. Yeah, McNeil's out with an ankle injury, Harrison on loan from Leeds United with a hip problem, Coleman, of course, with that knee problem. Deli Alley's had a setback with a, with a hip injury. Um, they need to strengthen, they need to go into this market before it shuts, to be fair. I'd be very surprised the way he pulled up if, he's, if he can continue, unless it's a bit of cramp, but cramp this early in the game. Just after half time would be a bit odd. A little bit. He's good coming off, like you say. It's very surprising to see him continue. He's on his feet, but he's walking extremely gingerly. And uh, Iwobi's going to go straight down the tunnel once again. So. Yeah, probably Neil Mopar go through the middle and probably Danjuma out wide. So that means that they're going to be forced into another change. They will have one more opportunity, but Mopay's going to come on. It limits the uh, Mopay who is currently going through his worst run of his English career. He hasn't scored in his last 28 appearances. We said about how he might have been frustrated that Danjuma came on to replace Calvert-Lewin, but he's going to get some game time after all. Play back underway. Everton still down to 10 men. McGinn comes forward, finds DRB inside the penalty area on that right side. There's a turn towards Camera. Camera waits. Shooting opportunity, takes a deflection, loops behind for a corner kick. Villa lead 2-0, 5 live. Yeah, good play. Good play between Watkins and McGinn. And as you say, um, Camera has a shot and it's a good block from Tarkovsky. So Mope is on. Bright orange boots, dyed hair. Final instructions from Steve Stone. Five years, of course, a Villa player, 122 appearances. The former England international on the coaching staff, of course, of, uh, of Everton, as he was at, uh, at Burnley. Corner kick, though, to Aston Villa on this near side, the left, playing from right to left, attacking the north stand. Dinia, after it taken short, back to uh, McGinn. McGinn waits, turns, back onto his left foot. Passes the ball left side of the area. Dini with the cross. Tarkovsky heads it away. Out it goes for a Villa throw. Level with the Everton penalty area. Six minutes into the second half. And uh, the throw from Dini. Bouncing ball. Keane stabs it towards Bailey. And Bailey finishes it off. I cannot tell you how bad Everton's defending is. My word. It's from a throw on. There's a big gap. There's Bailey with a big gap. And not one of the defenders or the midfielders getting and, and mark him and he has a free shot at goal past Pickford. It is embarrassing defending from Everton. Well, from it was, a throw on as well, Denno. It was keen. He looks to the heavens, but he stabbed the ball into the pocket. Look, look at his gap here, Denno. Yeah, but he's unlucky, Keane, but there's a big gap here. This should be all locked up. There's a big gap and, and it is, yeah, it's poor from Keane. He should go with his left foot, goes with his right foot and it's a comfortable finish from Leon Bailey. Keane, and that is game over. Yeah. Keane punished. And Everton concede a third. And Aston Villa now lead Everton by three goals to nil. And for the first time in 211 league meetings, I think it's safe to say that Aston Villa will be winning five in a row against Everton. The point's surely secure now. Yeah, surely. <laughs> Everton didn't even look a threat until Dan Juma come on in that first half and if you're going to defend like that you're going to concede loads of goals in this league. So Everton's problems increase, injuries, conceding further goals and Aston Villa three goals to the good. Dan Juma cuts in, shot blocked. Here is Onana. Here is uh, Decore, Danjuma, first time shot, takes a deflection, took it away from Martinez, and although he dived towards his right hand side, it goes away for a, uh, a corner kick. Hibbs, the leading race for overs at Easter Road, Villa's opponents in the Europa Conference League playoff during uh, this week, coming week Thursday night. They travel to Edinburgh, and in Edinburgh, it's Hearts 3, Pardick nil. Hibbs 1, Wraith Rovers nil. still no goals between Kilmarnock and Celtic. Uh, Kenny Crawford will keep us in touch with that at, uh, at Rugby Park. But Aston Villa on their way to a victory as the cross comes in from that corner and loops behind and it will be a goal kick for Aston Villa. There I say it, with only eight minutes into the second half, you might have to earn your crust. Yeah, I know. It's going to be hard. I feel sorry, they're away fans. They've travelled in their numbers, Everton fans. 
have nothing to really shout about or scream about for the whole afternoon. And it's, you know what? I understand you can, everyone can make individual mistakes, but the way they were set up, they were set up totally wrong. There shouldn't be a big gap from a throw on and one mistake, Bailey's in on goal. It shouldn't happen like that. Well, Villa now on course for eight successive wins in the uh, in the Premier League. That'll be a, a club record in the Premier League, but of course football existed before the invention of the Premier League, so they last won eight in a row here at Villa Park back in 1990. Unai Emery's turned this place into a fortress. They are. There's a lot of people tipping Villa to have a good season, a really, really good season, to be fair. And I know they got beat by Newcastle at St James's Park. Sorry, St James's Park, but anyone could get that. Newcastle are a really good team, especially at St James's Park, and the atmosphere was electric. And obviously, losing Tyrone Mings early was a huge blow to Aston Villa. History repeating itself. You think back on the opening day of last season, Villa lost at, uh, at Bournemouth, but they played Everton on match day two, and they got the victory that day, albeit by a, a tighter margin, 2 1. But here they lead 3 0, nine minutes into the second half on five live. Patterson's forward ball for Everton, they're playing in all royal blue, they're playing from left to right, attacking the whole end as we look. And really, you're thinking damage limitation at this stage already for Everton. Yeah, you don't want it to be 4, 5 or 6 and concede it, because it, it the, the group will already be low on confidence as it is, and you want to try and maybe score a goal. That's the biggest thing, putting the ball in the back of the net, and today he's been conceding them as well. Ball played out from the back out towards Cash, bouncing ball eventually brought under control for the uh, the Villa right back, far side, down the line it goes, Bailey running back in towards his own half, passes the ball now to Power Torres, time to acknowledge that pass with a thumbs up before he decides to come forward, the Spanish international, and then it's passed forward to, to Dinia, his ball inside, referee got in the way, that was surely aimed for, for McGinn, he complains, referee says play on, He's acknowledged that because Villa have got the ball back now and it's with Bailey who's got that third goal. Camera's ahead of him, here is Camera towards Watkins. Watkins looking for a shooting opportunity, couldn't spin to turn to pass the ball into the inside left channel to McGinn and it will be Dobbin, the young player for Everton, to bring the ball away. He runs forward, bit of pace to Mope, didn't stick. Oh, you could see the frustration from Sean Dyche. Because twice he's gone up to him and it's not stuck. He's got to be better than that. He's got to be better in possession. Young Dobbin done well there. Here is Diaby coming forward. This exciting player, Diaby to Watkins. Watkins with a finish, just wide. Hit it first time. Almost running in the inside right channel of the penalty area. Hits it right footed, so it goes across the face of goal. That must have been a matter of inches away from the left-hand post. Out for a goal kick. Pickford has stayed down. Pickford's got an injury. Villa lead 3 0. Yeah, Watkins should be scoring that. He knows he should. He's done everything right, dinked it, but he's dinked it and he's put too much on it. And yeah, it's a big opportunity for Ollie Watkins. But yeah, I think Pickford collides with one of his defenders. But big opportunity. Good play from Diaby. Good run from Watkins. But really and truly should be working the goalkeeper there. Well, he's back on his feet, but he's certainly feeling the effects of that challenge. Is Pickford. He's just got his arms in his loft. He's arching his back. He's just trying to stretch and make sure that there are. No lingering ill effects from that challenge for Jordan Pickford, all in green. He conceded 57 goals last season. And they shipped another three here today. Trailing by three goals to nil, as we are actually in the 57th minute here at, uh, at Villa Park. BBC Radio 5 Live. West Ham Chelsea to come at 4.30. Ball from Onana. Hit early, hit high in the air over the head of Dan Juma, it will be a, a Villa throw. We'll bring you as much reaction as we can. We'll get that during the course of the uh, the programme as part of Five Lives Premier League Sunday. So, of course, after this game, we'll switch our attentions to that London derby. West Ham and uh, Chelsea, John Murray and Paul Robinson will be providing the commentary for uh, for Five Live. Might be that we have to wait for, uh, for half-time of that game. And if not, it will be available on the Five Live Football Daily podcast that is available seven days a week. You can download it at your leisure. Approaching the hour. We're talking of uh, leisure, that's a leisurely pace for Villa, isn't it, really, at the minute? Very leisurely. Very. Look, this is where you can just give other players opportunity as well if you want to. I know it's still early on in the season. Powell hits the ball early, up oh. towards Watkins. Just bounced away from him, gathered in the sunshine by Pickford. They just look a good team, Aston Villa. And I knew last week was just a setback, but I, feel, I do think they'll have a good season. 
I know they've got a few injuries at the moment, but they've bought well this summer. Another noticeable thing about Unai Emery, it's very, very rare that they don't actually score. You think back now, they failed to score in only two of 27 Premier League games, if you include this one, where they're 3-0 up. Dan Juma, forward for Everton, enters the penalty area on the left-hand side, goes away from, uh, from Dobbin, Patterson hits it, first time right-footed, he was going off target, it was diverted behind off the legs of Douglas Louise for an Everton corner kick as they trail 3 0. I tell you what, Dobbin and Dan Juma have added something um, to Everton. They look really lively, know that they can create stuff. And Villa look like they're going to make a double substitution soon with, I think, Philip Coutinho and Tillemans coming on. Nice applause in the meantime for, uh, for Ashley Young, sporting reception from the Villa fans for a former Villa player in his two spells as he goes to the halt end to take the corner kick on the Everton right. It's right-footed, it's deep into the penalty area. Oh, Mope shot, very unlucky, comes back towards Mope and then it's spooned behind for a corner kick. He met it on the full, didn't he? Good yeah, save by Martinez. He's unlucky, uh, Mope, and you probably want it to go in for him personally because he needs a goal and it, his confidence well. But yeah, Villa's not, no one's marking him at the back post and it's a good save from Emi Martinez. Last touch actually must have been off an Everton player. I thought it was going to be a, a, a corner kick. Oh, it did. It bounced off the knees of Mope. He wasn't a judge to have kept the ball in play before it was spooned behind by the legs of, uh, of Martinez. So, uh, Mope almost had a chance to get Everton on the score sheet, but as it is, they still trail. As Martinez now chips that ball up towards Dina off his chest on this near side. Closed down well by Dobbin. Played back by Dina. Mope was there. Pau Torres lifts it forward. Be a, did you say a triple or a double change? Triple now, because yeah. they just got Carlos ready. So, yeah, it, it was going to be a double. And it's a triple one. So, Coutinho, who came off the bench last week at St. James's Park. Diego Carlos is coming on. And Yuri Tielemans, he also had a run out off the bench in that heavy defeat at St. James's Park. So, the uh, a triple change can be made by Unai Emery, who has that luxury, of course, because... You look at the games for Villa, and because of that game against, or the two games against Hibs, quite a congested early part of the schedule for Villa. And they've got a few injuries that they picked up already, and you're early on in the season, you're not up and running, so they, these substitutions kind of make sense, and then you rest it, and the games that you've got, as you said, in Europe coming up. That conference playoff, first leg at Easter Road, Thursday night. Douglas Louise to take the corner, it's taken short on this near side, the left. Back with Douglas Louise to McGinn, McGinn threads it, Leon Bailey trying to get there, challenge from Tarkovsky, Bailey was upended inside the penalty area, but there was no appeals for a penalty, heavy touch from Dobbin gives it away towards McGinn, runs forward, down towards the corner flag, Dobbin slides into the challenge and forces the ball behind for a corner kick, Bailey has stayed down inside the penalty area. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he's injured, he needs to get up, because to be fair, I think it was good defending, good strong defending um, by... He was, it was Patterson, he came across as good defending, he might have caught his foot, but it's good strong defending. He's coming off anyway, it'll be Tielemans for Bailey, Coutinho for Douglas Luiz, and Diego Carlos for Diaby. They're the, uh, the three changes. Wow, but Diaby, Carlos, they must be going to a freedom. Yeah. Uh, so... He's just getting his instructions, actually, Diego Carlos from uh, Unai Emery. Of course, uh, it was uh, during the Everton game on the second, he's only his second appearance last season that he picked up that bad Achilles injury, which uh, meant he only made three appearances throughout for the, uh, the Brazilian after he was signed uh, for £26 million from Sevilla. Uh, Bailey, though, has, uh, has stayed down and he's still getting lengthy treatment as the Villa fans in that north stands break out into a chant and the atmosphere lifts in the sunshine and the blue skies at Villa Park. We're in the 63rd minute. He's now on his feet, but he's coming off anyway. So is this the time to make the changes? Yes, it is. There's the, the number 31 with the electronic board and the triple change. So Bailey on the score sheet, hobbles off. Diaby, you're going to see Coutinho coming on as well. And as you say, they're likely going to switch to three at the back. Yeah, I can see that if you saw them attacking players that are coming off, for sure. So, it's Tielemans, Coutinho and Diego Carlos on. 
not happy. Douglas Louise. Bailey, Diaby, <laughs> the and Douglas Louise are off. Mind you, with the success of Unai Emery, particularly in you know the Europa League, you think of playing Thursday, Sundays. Amazing how sometimes the English sides tend to struggle. The Spanish, particularly Emery, past masters at that. Yeah, he knows how to manage players with the, the testing schedule that they're going to face. Diaby unable to score back-to-back -back goals after that one at Newcastle last week. So the triple change made. Villa are on easy street. They lead by three goals to nil. And the Everton fans having to shield the sun from their eyes in that lower tier of the stand on the far side as they wait for their former defender, Dini, to take the corner kick. Left-footed, outswinger, Keane heads it away, Dobbin helps it further away, Cash heads it back to Tielemans, lifts it in first time, it'll go out of play for, uh, for a throw. In the, uh, the World Athletics... Uh, and the 100 meter semi finals over the next half hour likely updates. Yep, we'll I don't want that. I've recorded that, so don't I don't give me no well, updates. You're, you're gonna have a problem because uh, over the next half hour, we're gonna get updates of those semi finals for you here. On there's a reason why I recorded it because I didn't want to know. I like to watch it when I get home, can't believe it. Well, you might require Amy in the studio then to tell you that we're gonna get there. You can take your headphones yeah, I'll off, take them off. <laughs> and as we nip to Budapest. <laughs> There is uh, five live sport for the live athletics from the World Championships in Budapest throughout the week to look forward to. Coverage today on BBC One Should from 3 until 6.35. Should we speak to our mate John Murray or not? Yeah, let's get the team news from John. <laughs> Hello to you both, yes. <laughs> uh, right, the team news, West Ham, Chelsea. James Ward-Prowse is straight in for his debut, takes the place of Fornals. Uh, that's David Moyes' only change to his team that started the season. So the other midfield signing, Edson Alvarez, is a substitute. <laughs> Cresswell is also on the bench for West Ham and the Chelsea news is that the new record signing Moises Caicedo is named as a substitute Romeo Lavia is not in the 20 so Chelsea's only change from last week is a full debut for Marlo Gusto at right back for the injured Rhys James and Ben Chilwell is captain for this one I hate to continue with the pie theme but we've got some filling to do during this second half lots uh, of fillings <laughs> And lots of toppings. <laughs> Let's go to Dave Woods, watching the Rugby League at Headingley. Uh, Leeds 6, Warrington 4. Sam Walters has just scored for Leeds, striding through on the back of some back-to-back -back penalties. Martins kicked the goal. Leeds 6, Warrington 4. Thanks, Dave. 3-0 to uh, to Villa here at, uh, at uh, Villa Park. Here is Tielemans in the sunshine, coming forward. Right-footed ball out towards Dinia. Just rolls up a little bit, brings it under control. The left foot strokes it inside to, uh, to Coutinho. And Coutinho back to, uh, to Diego Carlos. So now it's Diego Carlos is the central figure. Consas to the right of that three. Pau Torres to the left. Dini becomes the left wing back. Matty Cash plays right wing back on that far side. And that adaptability, the flexibility of Unai Emery. Yeah, it's good. And it can, as you said, in Europe, he could, he could easily do a free arm at the back in Europe. So it's good. And their opponents on Thursday night, Hibs now lead Wraith 2-1. As the shot comes in from Coutinho, it was straight at Pickford. Hearts are still leading Partick 3-0. No goals between Kilmarnock and Celtic in the championship. Norwich go third. They beat Millwall by three goals to one. It's the third game. I think it's fair to say that we can start saying they've gone third. Uh, not having people going top of the table after one or two games. No, you're right. Um, so someone's, I read a, a preview, it said Villa bottom of the table, not after one match. No, yeah, exactly. No, no, no. Three games, yes. <laughs> Seven points so far for, uh, for Norwich City in the early stages in the championship after that win at Carrow Road. Mope was played through to it. Mope tries to shrug off Carlos. Carlos, great strength. Mount, mountain he is. I look at him when he was warming up, I was thinking, I'm glad I'm sat here and not out there. Then know if he's coming up. So strong. It was a nice threaded ball through to uh, to Mope, side on, just couldn't get the bits better of Carlos, and in the end, he, he just came off second best. Yeah, it's a physical mismatch to be fair, and he's a, he's a strong guy, he's really strong, Diego Carlos, and you want to see him get more football um, this season. Problems then remain for, uh, for Everton, it's not just under Sean Dyche, but they really have been quite anemic on the road for some time. Only three wins out of well, what now will be 37 Premier League games on their travels. That goes back to mid-September of 2021. And it's something that needs to address. They've had a couple of uh, struggles. They flirted 
with relegation two seasons ago, stayed up in their final home game against Crystal Palace, went to the wire, of course, last season. That was uh, too close to call, really, in that final game against Bournemouth. Boy, was it tense at Goodison Park. And you're just thinking once again, it's going to another be a, yeah, a season could, where they're going to struggle, they're going to toil. I think you're right, Dan. It could be a long season on for Evan. Listen, we know they've got players coming back. We know they're trying to dip into the transfer market to sort out the centre forward plays um, situation. Hopefully, Calvert Lewin's not out for too long because they're going to need him. He's a big player for them. But yeah, I think I've always said I think Evan will be safe. But they just, these fans don't want that. It's Evan Football Club. They don't want it to be going to the last um, day of the season. 3-0 down, and we're midway through the second half on BBC Radio 5 Live, and Aston Villa have certainly responded extremely well to what was their heaviest opening day loss since 1985 when they lost 4-0 at Manchester United. The point's secure, substitutes are on, Una Emery will be extremely happy, as uh, here is camera in the, uh, the centre circle, strokes the ball, and even we can tell by the atmosphere. I mean, there's just no jeopardy in the game whatsoever. No, and Villa can treat it like a training match. Just keep the ball for fun. 4-0 now at Tynecastle. So Hearts through to the next round of the Scottish League Cup as they are leading Partick 4-0 at Tynecastle. Hibs still have a slender lead, 2-1 against Wraith. Goalless at, at Rugby Park still. As here is Tielemans, forward ball. Coutinho is onto it, now looks towards Watkins. Watkins couldn't control the ball just enabled Patterson to nip in there after a, the touch of his left boot just went away from him. Yeah, his touch hasn't been as sharp as it usually is on Molly Watkins because he's had a few good opportunities like that. Good play from Coutinho and Tillemans. That's the voice of Clinton Morrison paired together on a Sunday afternoon. What else Again. could you wish for? Exactly. No sanitation problems, however, here today as there was at, uh, at <laughs> Oh, Brentford yeah, last that week. was crazy. <laughs> here is Dobbin running back. As now to uh, to Keen. Another try. It's at Headingley. It's the Rugby League at Staplewoods. Lead six, Warrington 10. Warrington back ahead, thrillingly. Uh, Dufty breaking from his own half and then passing it on to Matty Ashton, who sprinted away from 40 yards out. Ratchford's kicked the goal. Lead six, Warrington 10. 12 minutes of the first half remain. And we've got 19 minutes remaining of this second half. Watkins does ever so well to keep the ball in play as he head away to this near side the left he's now up against Keane who backs pedals and then Watkins he looks for that one he nudged the ball past Keane and then he he jumped into Keane looking for the free kick Anthony Taylor up with play good refereeing said no foul yeah it was a good opportunity for him he, he took a heavy touch that's why once he checked in and he took the heavy touch he then just jumped into um, Michael Keane so good refereeing from Taylor here is uh, Onana at a walking pace, so Nana, who's been linked with, with Manchester United, very tall, physical presence. The uh, midfield in for uh, for Everton, Belgian international, as Mope to uh, Decore, Garner playing in front of Villa, out towards Dobbin, can't get past Dinia, stands up into the challenge, and Villa have the ball, just nicked back by uh, Coutinho, flicks it forward. Nobody on the end of that. He was expecting Watkins to be there. But he's not a mind reader. Mastini then makes a foul, and that will be on Onana and a free kick to uh, to Everton. 18 minutes remaining. Yeah, it's Everton just, as I said, they've kept the score down, give their fans something to cheer about on the, on the drive back up on the motorway. They would like to see a goal open their account for the season. Yep, yeah, it was uh, frustrating for them last week against uh, against Fulham. Think back to last season as well. The, the, the tally of 36 points was their lowest points tally since three points for a win was introduced. That was 81-82. Really did struggle. And 3-0 uh, down here at Villa Park. Watkins from that free kick. Villa clear, lays it off. Watkins now is surging forward, looking to try and get on the end of Coutinho. He was challenged by James Garner. McGinn keeps it alive out towards that far side that's Conter actually popping up on the right corner of the penalty area but Dunjuma had chased back with him and Dunjuma is there and now finds Ashley he, Young he's been a positive for Everton Dunjuma he's been a positive positive going forward positive tracking back yeah I think he's done well so far for Everton on what has been a, a difficult afternoon Definitely. and I notice already there are a, a lot more empty sky blue seats in that bottom tier of where the Everton travelling contingent is because they've probably seen enough and they're thinking we'll beat the traffic, we'll head up the M6 and get home a little bit earlier. 
Would it be too late for a pie by the time they get back to Merseyside? No, nah, never too late for a pie. You can have a pie at any time you want. 17 minutes remain. We're going to see another change for uh, for Aston Villa. And it is, uh, it's going to be... Yeah, that'll be Ollie Watkins, that for Duran. John Duran, yeah. who's going to be coming on. So, Duran signed in January from Chicago Fire, Colombian international. His 13th appearance, and all of them have been off the bench, and Clinton Morrison, you called it spot on. It is Watkins who comes off. Yeah, he's not had the game that he wanted to. He'll be frustrated he's not, he's not scored. He will be really frustrated that he's not scored, but he works hard for the team, and he's a big part of this football, um, football club moving forward. So, Duran. He's a teenager, Colombian international. He is uh, is on chance for to see him yet again. Bright orange boots. As so we'll get an update from the Athletics with Catherine Merry. The semi-finals of the men's 100 metres are on track. Britain's Eugene Amodadze has just missed an automatic qualifying spot. We'll wait and see if he qualifies for the final later. And up next on track, the British record holder, the world leader, Zarnel Hughes will go. And here is Duran with an opportunity now to make it four. And he has. And he took it so well to score his first goal for the club. Moments after coming on, teenager nipped in, Evans defence exposed. And Duran left footed guides the ball into the right hand corner. And Aston Villa lead Everton by four goals to nil. Brilliant from Duran, but if I'm Molly Watkins, I'm gutted. Not gutted because he had his score, but gutted. I know what centre forwards are like. They've just come off waiting for big opportunities like that all day. But yeah, it's good. Once he gets into it, Duran, it's his first touch. It's a really confident finish from the young man. And fair play to him, he's getting his first goal. And Clinton was true to his word when we handed to Catherine. You did take off your headphones, so you didn't want to hear it. I should just say, Clinton, to give you a warning, we are going to be trying to take the commentary of Zarnell Hughes very, very soon as well, so you might need to, to whip your headphones back off. But here, yeah. Durant, he, he latched onto that extremely well, and what a composed finish. Yeah, he looks really sharp, really sharp, really good finish. A good about 13 being unlucky. It's uh, 13 lucky because on his 13th appearance he's first for the goal first for the club and uh, the teenager who was signed for 18 million pounds from Chicago Fire looks to the skies and is very very happy so as promised commentary of Zainal Hughes with Catherine the second semi-final then of the men's 100 meters here in Budapest on day number two of these world championships bright sunshine over 30 degrees of heat and Christian Coleman is being introduced to the crowd. The American will start in lane number five, the world indoor record holder over 60 metres. And very shortly, Zarnell Hughes of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the 28-year-old world leader. He set a time of 9.83 seconds this year. He's replaced Linford Christie and John Regis as the British record holder over both distances in the sprint events. He's got a smile on his face, he's licking his lips, and the British fans just behind Zarnell Hughes are waving their flags. He starts in lane number seven. The first semi-final incidentally was won by the colourful Noah Lyles in a season's best of 9.87 seconds. So Yanagita of Japan goes in two, Ogunlawe of Nigeria in three, Sambini from South Africa, the 29-year-old, 9.84 seconds at his best goes in four. Christian Coleman, the world's fastest man in the world in 2017, 18 and 19. He's won this title before. He goes in lane five. Ford of Jamaica in six. Zarnell Hughes was impressive in qualifying yesterday for this semi-final. He's staring down the track. The stadium announcer gets everybody to go quiet. Matadi of Liberia goes in eight and Archibald of Guyana in nine. Christian Coleman, the American in lane five, looks to the sky. He has a lifetime best, the American, of 9.79 seconds. Zarnell Hughes sets into the block. So many disasters at recent major championships for the British athlete, disqualified in major finals in years gone by. But in 2023, nobody has run faster than Zarnell Hughes in the world. The first two will automatically go through to the world final later. They settle in their blocks. You can hear a pin drop and a false start. So I'm going to go back to the football and we'll come back 
for the second time of asking for Zarnell Hughes. Catherine, haven't really missed anything whilst we've been with you in Budapest. Villa still lead Everton by four goals to nil. Clinton, there was a false start, so we're going back to Budapest very, very... I know you just put your headphones back on, you don't want to... Hey. Full start. Yeah, so we're going to go back to see how Zainal Hughes gets on very, very soon. So full start. Well, he was away for two minutes. The race only takes ten seconds. A full start. Oh, <laughs> my. I'm going back off again. All right. <laughs> don't go off just yet. I might need you. All right, no worries. But nah, I'll listen to it. I'm joking. I don't care. I I'll listen to it, mate. I'm only one you. Here is Diego Carlos. Chips the ball forward. Coutinho. The Everton fans now. That is a rapidly emptying away end over on that far side as uh, their side 4-0 down here and uh, it's interesting to see what Sean Dyche makes of the, uh, the defending when you consider that the two goals that Villa have scored in the second half have been capitalised on defensive mistakes yeah it's been it's big mistakes and that's the biggest problem you come to grounds like this you don't need to give them a head start they're a talented team Aston Villa too many mistakes from Everton this afternoon Everton with Dan Juma just shows too much of the ball there to uh, to camera who brings it away and there is cash on the far side villa looking to try and build on their seventh place finish last season their highest finish since the days of martin o'neill when he got them to a sixth place finish back in 2010 at european competition a club very much on the up real feel good factor here at villa park as coutinho to durant Back with Coutinho once again, nutmegs Dobbin, shoots from distance. It was an ambitious effort. It was always on the rise off his right boot from a good 30 yards out from goal. Goal kick, Clinton Morrison. Yeah, he's just wants to entertain um, Philip Coutinho. Could have um, carried on. Unai Emre was thinking, just carry on. But you know what? They're winning 4 0. Why not try something? It was a lovely little nutmeg. So, for, uh, for Everton, they only kept two clean sheets on their travels in the Premier League last season. They were both in the capital at Fulham and Crystal Palace. They've uh, come unstuck here today. 4-0 down against a, an impressive Aston Villa side. And yet, you feel there's still so much more to come from Villa. Oh, definitely. There's lots, much more to come on for Aston Villa. As I said, I don't think the season gets up and running after six or seven games you get to really where you are should be in your fitness and stuff like that but you need to win games only we're going to go back to the athletics there's a stoppage in play here Villa still lead Everton 4-0 Catherine Merry there's been a disqualification then in the second semi-final of this men's 100 meters South African Akane Simbine who's been in the top five at the last five Olympic or world 100 meter finals has been removed Zarnell Hughes goes in lane seven the athletes are settled in their blocks. A blue sky here in Budapest. Can the world leader, the 28-year-old, clean start. Christian Coleman's out like an absolute rocket, the American. That's to be expected. Zarnell Hughes got a bit of work to do here. Ford of Jamaica in second. Here comes Zarnell Hughes. He had to work for that one. 9.88 seconds for Christian Coleman. That's the season's best for the American. But Zarnell Hughes did get up into second and he's gone under the 10 second barrier and he is Alison Kerbishley in the world final later. Yeah, he certainly did have to work for that. You're right, Kath. He did react, but his dry face, those, those first 10 meters, those first five strides were just not as powerful, not as explosive as the likes of Christian Coleman who took that semi-final 9.88 the guys are ready aren't they 9.93 confirmed for Zarnell Hughes he's in the final Zarnell Hughes then in the final he'll come back later but Noah Lyles and Christian Coleman the two Americans are on fire here this evening but as a Villa fan Ian Dennis I'll happily hand it back to you well Catherine thank you very much and thank you to uh, to Alison as well uh, coverage to look forward to throughout the week from Catherine and Alison five live sport for those world athletics championships and not just throughout the week of course uh, throughout the day as well uh, here on five live sport and uh, Villa leading 4-0 now they were going to bring on Chambers but John McGinn has just signaled to the bench because this will be their fifth and final change but there's a player who's just gone yeah, to Philip ground on Coutinho. that far side and Coutinho's gone down. Yeah, he got, he, he got, it was a free kick given. A, jarred his knee. Got, yeah, he got caught there late. So they're, they're rushing the physios off. So he can't buy luck at the minute. He, he's another one who picks up a lot of injuries. Hopefully he's okay. 
Only 22 appearances last season, so another stoppage here at Villa Park. The, the game long since gone, Villa lead 4-0. But don't go anywhere, we're going to keep you up to date with the athletics. We've got more live football to come. And of course the Rugby League at Headingley with Dave Woods. Well it's half time, lead 6, Warrington 10, a couple of Warrington tries, Ashton and Dufty and Walters in between for Leeds. It's not been great, Leeds needing to win to keep their slender top six hopes alive but it's Warrington who are leading at the moment half time War uh, lead six Warrington 10 well Hearts and Hibs are both leading in the Scottish League Cup second round what about Kilmarnock Celtic half time at Rugby Park Kenny Crawford and the score is Kilmarnock nil Celtic nil Ian not the most eventful match but Kilmarnock will be more than happy to go in level pegging at the half time break Corey and Dabas had their two best chances the man on loan from Ipswich Town big defender he hooked over from Matty Kennedy's early corner and then just before the the break his header went just wide from Stuart Finlay's cross as for Celtic Kyogo 35 goals last season he's had their two best chances he couldn't quite get on the end of Odin Holmes centre early on and then he had the shot saved uh, by Will Dennis after dispossessing Danny Armstrong 0-0 at the break between Kilmarnock and Celtic and they're coming to a conclusion those two games in Edinburgh Hearts 4-0 uh, up against Partick at Tynecastle Hibs still lead Rape at Easter Road by two goals to one in the championship earlier Norwich City 3 Mill Wall won, and I'm sure you've heard by now in the Women's World Cup final, Spain beat England by a goal to nil. Commentary at 4.30. West Ham United against Chelsea to come on five live. Coutinho only now is being helped back to his feet. And in fact, they have changed the fact that Chambers is going to be coming on. So Callum Chambers isn't going to get a run out after all. And instead, it will be Cameron Archer. And John McGinn was quite right to alert the bench. Uh, so... Cameron Archer, as uh, McGinn actually helps with the physio bag, brings it off to this near side. He's desperate for the game to, uh, to resume as well. Cameron Archer, another part of Lee Carsley's successful under-21 winning side for the Euros in the, uh, in the summer. Two goals in five appearances. He comes on for his 14th appearance. He did well for Middlesbrough on loan last season. Cameron Archer comes on, and it is Coutinho who goes off. He hasn't had a regular run in the side, Coutinho. He only started twice under Unai Emery. He'll hope that that injury is not a serious one, but he's been helped off the pitch on the far side of the field. If he can't walk in it, where's the stretcher? I do not get that for the life of me. You've got a stretcher available. Get him on the stretcher. He's hobbling around the pitch. Full time at Tynecastle. Hearts are through. They have beaten Partick 4-0 as uh, a yellow card is shown to, uh, to Patterson, the former Rangers player. That's the fourth yellow card to, uh, to Everton so on oh, such a di disappointing and difficult afternoon for them. And there's hardly many Evertonians who have remained. I bet you're looking from that such loyal support, there could only be about 500 spread out on the bottom and top tier on that far side. 41,694 is the attendance inside Villa Park this afternoon. Four minutes remain of normal time here on Five Live. Villa will be looking for a fifth goal in these closing stages as, uh, as Dobbin feeds it forward. There was a late challenge from Tielemans on Dobbin that stopped him in his tracks and that'll be a free kick to, uh, to Everton. But uh, Ashton Villa, been impressed? Yeah, I've been impressed, really, really impressed. They've, listen, Everton have not really been nowhere near it to be fair, but yeah, they, they needed them to bounce back and this was probably the perfect game for them to go and bounce back and show the, showcase their ability. But in the first half, they blew Everton away and in the second half, it's been comfortable. Everton haven't really laid a glove on um, Aston Villa. It's been really comfortable, but I was impressed with Villa. I saw them, a lot of them in pre-season and I think, I know they've got a lot of injuries, but they could have a good season. Well, certainly Villa will look to try and take uh, sorry, Everton will look to take advantage of the next two games and the big games as well. Wolves at home on the Saturday, Sheffield United away. In between that, they've got a trip to uh, to Doncaster in the League Cup. You're right about the stretch of a Coutinho. He's probably advanced about 10 yards and he's walking extremely slowly. It's like a tortoise yeah, over there. It makes no sense. If it's a bad um, injury, what he's got, surely putting weight on it, it's going to make it worse. But they're taking proper care. The two physios either side, letting, trying to take the, the bulk of the support, the, the weight of his body. But if it's that bad, it's going to take him an age to walk in front of the North Stand. Exactly. We've got two and a half minutes of normal time remaining. 4-0 to, uh, to Aston Villa. 
cash has gone down now. Talked before about the amount of players who are sidelined. Unai Emery will just be hopeful that there's not too much additional time, but with the injuries that we've had, we could be looking at six, seven minutes, maybe even more. What was it in the first half? Nine. nine, nine. So, uh, play back underway. Diego Carlos. It's got the feel of the atmosphere, like a pre-season game. It has now, and a feel of the referee blow up, and everyone would be happy. That's what I think it's got the feel of. No more injuries. Evan don't concede any more goals. Move on to next week. Pau Torres. Diego Carlos. Midway through his own half. Plenty of space to run into. Passes the ball out towards Cash. Cameron Archie gets a touch on the, uh, on the halfway line. And then it's going to be... A yellow card shown to Archer for holding back Dan Juma from Anthony Taylor. No real complaints from uh, the Villa substitute. That's the tally of eight yellow cards in uh, in total. It's just going through the, the paces here, isn't it? The routine of just yeah, seeing the game out now. Seeing it out, yeah, you're right. But for, uh, for Everton and Sean Dyche... He'll be hopeful to bolster his forward line if they are to get Shea Adams from Southampton. Nonto, another possibility. Onana, dispossessed easily by Cameron in the, uh, in the midfield. And Tielemans, neat and tidy in the midfield. And it's laid out to this near side to Dinia. Now towards Duran. Passes the ball in field to Tielemans. And Villa going through the pitch here and into the... Final third, and then the ball from Camera looking towards Dinia, who was quite advanced. He's on the stretch, couldn't prevent it from reaching James Garner. There's no one ahead of James Garner, and he runs forward. He's got no one to pass the ball. He waits for Dobbin on the overlap on this left-hand side. But then it's Duran with his work ethic, the striker getting back to put in the challenge. Yeah, it's, it's great work from Duran. I cannot believe. I'm just still looking at Coutinho. Uh, how they, if it's a bad injury, surely you shouldn't be walking nearly two or three hundred yards around the pitch. Well, it's only now, we've got another nine minutes of additional time, only now has he reached the mouth of the tunnel, has, uh, has Coutinho for, uh, for Aston Villa. That must have been a, a laborious and painful trip from the far side. It's taken him that long. Nine minutes have added on time. And the stadium clock does tick by on this occasion. Probably forgot in the first half. Yeah. Forgive them that. Oh, they were listening to us. Season. They were listening to us. Let's go back to uh, to Budapest. Catherine Mary. Confirmation then at the end of the three semi-finals in the men's 100 metres. Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Zarnell Hughes is through to the final. Eugene Amodadze and Reese Prescott though are out. But the qualifiers were led by Noah Lyles, the American, in 9.87 seconds. The defending champion Fred Curley from the USA is also out. So we've got Catherine, who's a big fan of Villa, and we've got Clinton Morrison, who's a big fan of the Athletics. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, Catherine's having a good day. She's a big fan of Aston Villa, because they've been excellent. But, yeah, I love the Athletics. I love it, so I'm big on it. Hopefully, Zarno, he, well, I don't want to know if he got through. But no, I, I won't I won't I'd say you. hopefully he wins the final, but I'll wait till I get home to I see I won't that. spoil the surprise, but... <laughs> knowing how meticulous John Murray is, I wouldn't listen to the commentary at 4.30 of, uh, of West Ham Chelsea because John is, is likely to give you a mention as well. So I just wouldn't listen at all. I'd put some music on on, on your way home. Right, as Villa uh, are going to secure an eighth successive win in the Premier League and in the process they'll have scored 18 goals and conceded just two. Although they have conceded a corner kick as Everton looked for a, a consolation in stoppage time. Villa 4, Everton 0. BBC Radio 5 Live at, uh, at Villa Park. And uh, I wonder if the, uh, the London derby that we'll be listening to on the, uh, on the way home, or at least I will, will be a closer affair of West Ham against Chelsea. In comes the corner for Everton. Pau Torres heads it away. Tarkovsky will try and retrieve it. He's knocked over by Tielemans. No foul, says the referee. And it goes out of play for, uh, for an Everton throw. Everton will... I mean... They were unlucky last week, let's be fair against Yeah, they Fulham. were. They were good against Fulham. They created a lot of chances, just couldn't put a ball in the back of the net. But it's very, very easy, isn't it? You can go into that international break in early September. If you haven't got many points on the board, 
straight away you, you find yourselves under pressure. Yeah, you do, you do, and that's and that's the biggest worry for Everton. Listen, coming to Villa Park was always going to be tough. Yeah. The amount of good players Villa and the season they had last season, the players that they brought in, so you can't judge Everton on this game. But it's the manner losing four 0 and that's the biggest disappointment I think for Everton this afternoon. Defensively, they'll certainly hope to tighten up against Wolves. Only the eight wins last season, their lowest ever in a campaign. You think of Everton's long and proud history, 145 years, and last season really was a, a bleak campaign for their loyal supporters as the free kick from James Garner is easily caught by Martinez in that uh, penalty area in the sunshine in front of the Holt end. They've literally gone all the Everton fans. Don't literally, blame them. Yeah, I don't blame them to get some nice day as well, get back up the road. You yeah. Know. But they're just spread out, strewn all over now. The uh, what are rapidly the emptying seats, and uh, the Everton fans just standing, looking bewildered. Another season of of struggle. You you think on the evidence of this for them as they look to try and turn their fortunes around, and you think where they used to be under David Moyes, who certainly had nowhere near the level of investment that other managers have had under Farhad Mashiri. Sean Dyche is the eighth manager since uh, Mashiri came to Goodison Park in February 2016. Mope lays it off. Villa will just now look to try and keep the clean sheet to add for what will be the perfect performance, really, for Una Emery's side. 4-0. We're halfway through the nine minutes of added on time at a silent Villa Park as Archer picks up the ball, he's closed down by Garner, the referee gets in the way. That'll be an uncontested drop ball, the Villa fans can't play, but there's nothing he could do. He's yeah, running he, those diagonal lines that the referees tend to do. He could get out of the way, Deno, just let it go through his legs. That's how I know he's never played the game. No, I'm only joking. He couldn't do nothing about that. <laughs> so it's an uncontested drop ball. Poor old referee, though. Villa fans on his back straight away. No, no, straight away. Chance. <laughs> Anyone would think they're losing. <laughs> But they uh, they will depart Villa Park in the uh, in the sunshine now. Those black those grey skies are moving on, and I think every Villa fan listening to BBC Radio Five Live, whether they happen to be in uh, in Budapest or a little bit closer to home, will be very very happy. As uh, Onyango is uh, going to be coming on, it's going to be a, a change for uh, for Sean Dyche in the closing stages, just to give Tyler Onyango. Um, Loans last season at Burton and Forest Green. He's a midfielder, only 20 years of age, who's come through the academy. Made three Premier League substitute appearances in 21-22. Going to be a fifth appearance in total for uh, for Everton. Quite rangy with his, uh, his bushy hair for the, uh, the slender Onyango to come on. As that ball on that left-hand side was easily cut out. And it's Tielemans who will trot forward. Villa just on well, the camera already is poised on Unai Emery as he maintains Villa's excellent run here at, uh, at Villa Park and Onyango waits to come on with three minutes remaining the ball doesn't go out of play he might not get onto the uh, to the pitch as still Unai Emery is making those pointing and gesturing getting the instructions across but Villa very very comfortable who stood out for you then from a Villa point of view? Well, hold on, here is Archer picking up the ball for Villa. Out it goes to uh, to Cash on that far side. We'll get your closing thoughts in a moment. Clinton, Archer, look towards Durant, the substitute, looking to combine with his colleague off the bench. Everton get the ball, Everton come forward. So go on then, who would you say really caught the eye for you from Villa? I think John McGinn's been outstanding. I think he's energy in midfield and listen, I can always pick Diaby and the likes of Leon Bailey, but I think McGinn, what he does is brilliant for this football team. He, he tracks back, he can score goals, he can create chances and yeah, I think he's had an outstanding game for Villa this afternoon. The voice of uh, Clinton Morrison on BBC Radio 5 Live. As it's going to be Decore who's uh, who's coming off. Hardly mentioned Decore. 
no, have we? No, because when I look at Abdul Dukuri, I think he's a, a midfielder in a two. They, Everton are trying to play him as a number 10. I don't see him as a number 10 to create stuff. I know he done it a bit last season, but I think he's better in the two as, in the midfield, not as a number 10 to go and get on the ball, create stuff and pick those passes and find a lot of goals, which you have to do in that creative role. I said this last season when I watched Everton, of course, a lot of Burnley's success under Sean Dyche was a 4-4-2. Yeah. But with these Everton players, it seems he can't play 4-4-2. No, he can't. I think it's different. I think at Burnley it suited him. He had the players to play the 4-4-2 and everyone knew and bought into it. It's totally different here with Everton. He has different players, so it's hard. And he needs two strikers anyway first in the building that are going to be fit if he can play 4-4-2. Well, here is uh, Tarkovsky. He played every minute of, uh, of last season, did the former Burnley defender. James Garner runs forward. Easily cut out, though, by Dina. Tielemans on the edge of his own penalty area. Camera plays the ball back. Diego Carlos chips it towards Pau Torres. And although Mope is running towards Torres, they're easily playing around Everton. They've spread it out now towards the right-hand side. Very, very easy on the eye, but it's it's so comfortable for them. Yeah, it's like it's a, it's like it's like a keep ball session in training. Just keep the ball. If, like ten passes is a goal. That's what everyone would know if you're a footballer then you'll have a thing where if you get 10 passes, 10 passes a goal. They can have about 30 or 40 passes. There's no pressure on them at the moment. Extremely one-sided affair this at, uh, at Villa Park. And by my watch, the nine minutes are almost up. And I can't believe as Mope almost catches camera that Anthony Taylor will be adding too much more because the, the players just play within themselves of Aston Villa. And indeed, there is the final whistle. Aston Villa 4, Everton 0. And Villa bounce back from that heavy defeat at Newcastle and hand out their own hiding. Yeah, they do. It's, it's, um, it, I wouldn't even go over there if I was Everton players or anything because all the fans have left. But credit to Aston Villa. Aston Villa are outstanding. From the first